All right, welcome to another BS session. Um, Jerry, man, what's going on? Introduce everybody, man. That man doing good, man. Just survived some pretty well. We actually got kind of lucky, man. There was a bad storm south of us, but uh, we were kind of fortunate to be able to avoid that. But anyway, you know, we have you know Al Horda from the Be Cool Ruby podcast out. You got it. I know. Yeah. And then we got Andy Rodriguez uh, from the Black Spinner podcast. Uh, Circle. How's it going, everybody? Black Spinner Circle. Damn, I had to fuck one of them. <laughs> I but, uh, it. it's okay. But uh, yeah, I, had a, I had a fun time doing a football show with him this year. Can't wait to do it next year. Yeah, it was and cool. of course, we know we got Mark and Charles, my awesome co-host. How's everybody doing tonight? We're doing yeah. all right, man. Hey, Can't man. wait for tonight's show. I'm excited. Oh, all right, Mark, yeah. man. What do we got going on, buddy? Well, let's hit charles man what do we got going on tonight charles uh doing the top 11 canadian canadian wow. artists or bands that aren't rush or triumph <laughs> which is that uh, take that takes out the uh <laughs> pretty much the top three <laughs> yeah, everybody everybody's everybody's, lo everybody's logging out now. <laughs> all of a, all of canadian music is out so I don't know. This was a challenging one for me, <laughs> but uh, fun at the same time. Yeah, you can't put you can't put Noel Gallagher in this list. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> one day we're gonna have to do top eleven artists from uh, Wyoming. Why don't we top? <laughs> do top why don't we do top eleven asshole artists, and they'll be on there for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sammy will be number one. And uh... <laughs> hey, there you go, Mark. Yeah, we'll get to him later. He's been officially christened a new name. He loves it. He loves it. So, so what's yeah. on our BS agenda today? All right. Well, oh, hey, let's, I, I got a rant. I haven't had a rant in a while. I'm going to start off with that and get your guys' opinion on it. Will this uh, guy be on the asshole list? I think so. Yeah, probably. God well. dang. Dave Mustaine, man. Uh, Metallica not taking Metal Megadeth on tour. Why won't those guys play with us? What are they afraid of? I heard they have the same manager, so it's like Dave somewhat asked their manager, "Why won't they take take us on tour with them?" And they never get back to them on that. And um, and then he also says Metallica got a big head start, and they did it on the back of what I helped create. The Megadeth leader says Dave was saying, "You know what?" Fuck you, Dave Mustaine. You're just as bad as Sammy Hagar. Fucking Metallica hasn't said one bad shit thing about you. They fucking don't respond to this bullshit. You're always fucking talking about them. Dude, we know you want back in the band. You're gone. It's over. Get over it. Same thing with you, Sammy. Van Halen's done. Stop it. But fucking Dave Mustaine, you're pissing me off. I love fucking Megadeth, but I always, I'm a Metallica narc turd or whatever you nerd not a turd because i don't <laughs> get pissy when people don't like what i like on them but uh fuck shut the fuck up dave mistain what do you think about that al um you know it's like it, it, with anything man like any interview that dave does he probably always gets fast on metallic anyway <laughs> he should probably um, just be like listen i've answered these questions in the past let's just move on to the next one but he chooses to answer them, and that's going to grab the headlines. So, um, I don't know, man. It just kind of it, – it, it, it's kind of the both ends, man. It's the media and and Dave. You know, Dave doesn't have to answer that stuff anymore, man. He's like, dude, I, he, could, he could be like, I had my time in them, and, uh, you know, it's their long in the past, and uh, just next question, you know. But, but he chooses is, to – why would Metallica want to do anything with him when he keeps talking shit like this? Awesome. Yeah, they're not going to they're not going to do anything. They don't need him, you know. It's Metallica is a juggernaut, man. They don't need to tour with anybody. You know what I mean? The fact that they still have opening acts is kind of you know, they want to help bands out, I guess, you know. But uh, you know, Dave's not going to get any help from that cuz he keeps mouthing off. So, I don't know, it's just uh Dave's always been an, uh, an outspoken idiot, you know? <laughs> but he's smart. What do you say? Good night, on. Um, where should I put my milkshake? Oh, put it in the fridge. Oh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no problem. Um, I don't know, man. Just Dave 
he, he's a smart guy. He's not stupid, but he puts his foot in his mouth all the time. That's part of his his thing, you know. So I don't know. I have no other opinion on that. Andy, he can't let he can't let oh, the pass sorry. go. He can't let the pass go. It's like an old girlfriend, man. He wants to go back back to it. Even though that chick's married and has kids, mm-hmm. <laughs> he still keeps on calling. <laughs> dude, this this dude, I don't understand this guy. He he's got one of the best bands. He's very popular around he's the been world. Successful on it. He's been successful with them, you know. Yeah, it's... he's very successful. It's not like he's got a shit band. You know, he's toured the world who knows how many times. Dude, it, it doesn't matter what. Metallica what? is always going to be more popular than Megadeth. He's mad because the Black Album fucking movie. destroyed anything he's ever done. So, <laughs> Yeah, but there in the 90s after the Black Album, when they came out with Load and Reload, Megadeth really did kind of push them, push them to the side for a little bit with the releases that Megadeth did throughout the 90s. The load and reload were fucking million sellers, man. I don't think Megadeth's yeah, album at that time sold point. as much as Metallica's. Well, at oh, that well, point, yeah, at that yeah, point Metallica could sell. shit on an album and it would sell a million. Yeah. Right, that sells. I'm talking about critical acclaim. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Those, Metallica those Megadeth albums that. were better than load and reload, in my opinion. Risk? And they've also been busier with releasing more albums. Uh, as well. Well. Risk, risk kind of wasn't good either. <laughs> Red know, Line's the only good song off that album. Yeah, but I'm not saying that everything he released was gold. Of course, he, of course, there were a couple of clunkers, but but they've kept busy. They, I think they released more albums than Metallica has. Oh, way more. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, like Charles likes to say, you know, I don't know why he's quality, not quantity. He's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know why why he's pissed off. I don't know why he would want to. Well, I know why why he would want to go go on tour with Metallica because they play big stadiums and he plays arenas. So, um, you know, I, I I just wish that Dave would just you know be quiet and just go back to doing what he does best. Well, I guess what he does best is talk shit and play music. So that's what he's doing. And it sounds and he's familiar. Some bitches about this. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why Hagar and uh, Dave Mustaine are friends. Even though I love both of them. Uh, I'll talk shit about Hagar when he's an idiot. Charles, what do you think of this? I'm going to defer to Jerry. I want to go last right before okay. you. Yeah. He's just always been, you know, like Al said, a jerk or an asshole or whatever the fuck he is. He said that look look like he's sucking on a linen. You know, fucking, I, I, he pisses me off, dude. He seems to shut the fuck up, man. Seriously. Like he all said, he's successful. He's got a great band. I mean, it's, it's, he, his band's in the top four, you know, the the you know the top four of thrash bands. Big four. four, the big four. Thank you, but uh, I mean, get on with it, dude. We know you help Metallica. Everybody knows that. I think people in Metallica know that. Move on, dude. Jesus, that's all I got to say. <laughs> Charles, is I mean, right. what else? What else can you say? I mean, oh, I got plenty more to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Good setup. I know how you feel. Go ahead. <laughs> Dave Mustaine cannot handle the fact that he was kicked out of America's greatest heavy metal band ever. <laughs> ever. Is Megadeth maybe better musically at times? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. You know what? I watch some kind of monster almost every week. <laughs> I love, 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 love watching Dave Mustaine cry like a little girl because he was kicked out of Metallica. It's there for pro- it's there forever, folks. Watch it. If you do not believe it, it's true. If Dave Mustaine today, Kirk Hammett decided to retire, and Lars and James fell on their head and made this mistake and said, you know what? Let's bring Dave back. It's a done deal. Oh, yeah. It's a done yeah. deal. Oh, yeah. Dave Mustain is in Metallica. To include Megadeth is disbanded. If they said, you must disband it while you're in Metallica, we'll bring you in like you did Robert, full member of the band. It's over. Megadeth's done. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so would Dave have to do all the fucking, you know, all the other tunes he didn't do? That's their fucking. Of course. He would do whatever. For all. Would, 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 would they let him do, would they let him do Megadeth songs? No. No. He'd, he'd drop it. He Dave was saying to Metallica. He would drop it. He would do Lulu. <laughs> do whatever. He don't care. All, all the, the biggest thing I don't like about Megadeth is their fan. The typical hardcore Megadeth fans are the, like Dave Mustaine. They attack Metallica fans, you're fucking idiots, posers, whatever. Hey, dude, I like both mans actually. Yeah, me too. Me too. But yeah. I, I've never been a fan of how Mustaine carries himself. When we all know he'd go back in Metallica in a minute. Yeah. He, he wants we to turn that so bad. It's like, and then he bad mouths him. <laughs> saying that he's the I don't know why, he's the one who gave I, them a head start. I don't really know why he'd want to go back in Metallica now, though, because he do, he knows damn well he wouldn't have no power in that band. Yeah, yeah. You know? I was here. He's got all the power, and, and he says it kicks people out whenever he wants. It's Mega Dave. It's, it's always been, it's always been Mega yeah. Dave. Come on, yeah. Do it just to prove that he was better than anybody. That's why. Oh, I can do more with these songs. Okay, whatever. I know you go back to Metallica. It's on some kind of monster. He didn't say it, but he might as well have. Yeah. Watching him boohoo like a little girl filled <laughs> me up with goodness. So, and he also said bass players are overrated too. <laughs> Which that's what I mean. He's always been a fucking jerk, man. That's he's probably like, shot it. Dude, you that know what? He gives Christians a bad name. Oh, I'm just saying. But. Uh, you, but for those who love Megadeth, I, I love them. I, I don't love them. I like them. I, I think Slayer's better, but whatever. Yeah. I agree. I, we'll get into a Slayer because you guys are probably going to make me do something on the Freeform Rock podcast <laughs> on Slayer. YouTube will probably be on there. I'll probably be just throwing up the whole episode. Yeah, I had to get really drunk to listen to Slayer again. Oh, God. I, I'm sorry about that raw track the other night. I didn't know because you know why. I don't listen to Slayer. So I didn't know that 86 live from Canada track of Angel of Death was fucking feedback. Fucking feedback. It was pretty bad. Yeah. It was pretty bad. It was raw. I didn't know. But you know why? Because I don't listen to Slayer. <laughs> I just put it on because it said live because I like playing live tracks on, on yeah. the show. But let's get to the next shit. Uh, well, I don't want to say shit. Let's get it. Like every week, we always go. Hi, you know, we're only here for a few few minutes, man. But uh, it just feels like every week we have to announce people who uh, passed away, <laughs> and it's like, man, I want to start. I I don't know this guy, so I'm going to refer to people to what Tim Amar of Death. I don't like death metal, but I uh, respect his friends and family. Al, do you have anything to say about him? Um. He was what the bass player, I think. Singer, singer, singer. I'm sorry, the singer. Yeah, he took over um, for Chuck. Yeah, um, I wasn't the. I, I remember I had a really good friend in, when I was in high school, and uh, we'd go over his house, and his older brother <laughs> um, liked a lot of uh, like thrash and and death metal and some, you know, like black metal and like the more extreme type of stuff. And I'd always look, look through his CDs. And uh, I remember he always had like death, death CDs. He had like leprosy, which is like their classic album. And uh, so for a little while, like I kind of got into them and um, I was into that stuff. I was bringing like blank tapes and making cassettes and stuff like that. So I remember uh, taping leprosy, which was their second album and uh, really liking it, you know, like, you know, cause I was starting to get into heavier music by, like 87, 88, I was already like really into thrash, Metallica, Megadeth, and you know, the big four, the big four bands. But then I was starting to branch out into like these other genres like death and possessed and things like that. Um, I don't listen to death metal a whole lot, but I like a little more melodic stuff, but every once in a while I like to go into like a, a little more of extreme thing. But um but anyway, like when Chuck died, that was a big deal, you know, because he was like uh, considered a, a pioneer in the death metal, death metal scene, you know. So that was like a big. I remember, I remember when he passed away. It was a big deal. Um, this guy, you know, I, I, I mean, from then on, I didn't really follow death, so I didn't really know 
uh, you know, much about this guy, you know, so, but it, it's, uh, it's, um, it's unfortunate, man. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure he wasn't that, that old either, you know, was he in his fifties, 59, I think. Yeah. Pushing. I mean, it seems to be a lot of like, you know, 60 is still, 60 is just still young, man. To die in his sixties and, yeah. you know, for, it's, it's still like, it's still young, man. So, I mean, he probably didn't live the, the healthiest lifestyle. Who knows? You know, I don't know what kind of lifestyle he led. So, um, but you know, rest in peace, you know, and, I'm sure, like for a lot of death fans, it's uh, it was, it's a loss, you know. But I haven't really followed him since like the early '90s, so I can't mm-hmm. I don't really know the guy, you know. So that's right, me. Andy. That's my uh, Andy. Oh, um, you know, I don't know that much about um about the band Death, but I know I do know that they were one of the four leaders in American underground death metal, and um, they have a large fan base. Um, unfortunately, I'm not one of them because that kind of music is a little bit too much for me. Me too. But you know, my condolences go out to his family and, um, of course, his fans because I do know that fans of Death, they're you know they're very dedicated to their band. So, you know, my condolences go out to them. You know, okay. that's terrible. And and to be only 59 or is that what y'all said? 59 was his age. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's um, a tough break, man. That sucks. So, so that's Charles, all I wanted to say. So, Charles, he said, I don't like metal. Do you have any thoughts on the guy dying? Yeah, it's horrible. Anybody that dies is horrible. Uh, a food poisoning, too. What? Which is, oh, that wow. what it was? Wow. Yeah, wow, that's, that's okay. Crazy. That's crazy, that's, right? That's kind of fucked up. To, that's kind of fucked up to die yeah. from, then. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it's crazy. Right, I mean, I'm not massive fans of the death metal genre, but uh, hey, you know, it don't matter. I know a lot of our mutual friends are, so I'm sure they yeah. felt it and yeah, uh, enjoy. Do his friends and family are uh, well? It matter about that. I mean, a human being died, so that's not yeah, cool. Yeah, that's and. Too. Uh, to his friends, family, fans, you know, my condolences. Condolences, man. But uh, then we get to you, Jerry. I mean, it sucks. I mean, <clears throat> I only knew the guy from the band Pharaoh. You guys ever heard of them? No. That's mm, no. I, I, as far as death is concerned, I stopped following them like maybe the late 90s, man. You know, So I really don't know much about them past then. I love them. I love their stuff back then. I thought it was very... Uh, um, yeah, leprosy is a classic, man. Yeah, I mean, it's good shit. But uh, I need to, re- I need to go back and, and check out their catalog because I haven't listened to it in a while. But I, I, I love their early stuff. So you know, rest in peace. You know, you know, hope their family, you know, finds peace. And you know, that's it. Yeah, food, food poisoning sucks, dude. Um, to die, yeah. to die from that, man. Shit. And and then yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna combine these two deaths. Uh, I don't know nothing about Tom, but condolences to his friends and family. But I'm going to combine these two deaths so we could, like, for time constraints. Uh, Raquel Welch, Welch, dead of 82, and Tim McCarver died. Uh, Al, any on both of those people? Um, yeah, Raquel Welch, come on. I mean, she was beautiful and uh, an icon. Um, she just look beautiful even when she was older, man. I mean, she aged gracefully, in my opinion. You know, Madonna, you should take note. You know yeah, what I mean? Oh, God. Um, no, honestly, her. man. Like, you know, I remember her in, like, um, you know, in some, like, later movies, and she looked older, but she still looked awesome, man. You know, like, she was still beautiful, you know? And, uh, and, um, and Tim, you know, I mean, Tim, uh, you know, broadcaster and, uh, and um, you know, he died at 81. So I mean 81 is still not terribly old. I'm saying that because my parents are 80, so I don't want to see them go yet. But you him know doing I mean? the World Series and shit. It's like he was he, I knew him basically as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, rest in peace to him too, you know. Um that's really it, man. I got nothing else, you know. Raquel Walsh, man. I mean, she's 
just such an icon now. She was still hot. Uh, Charles. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. What do you think about those two deaths? Same thing, man. Condolences. And uh, I, 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 I personally haven't seen that much of Raquel Welch's work, but I see her pictures plastered all over the place forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she's a beautiful woman. Uh, and Tim McCarver, I, I definitely remember his work as a baseball announcer. He had a, yeah. to me, kind of down home kind of vibe to him uh, with his work. And I always really enjoyed his work. So, you know, that was like a few hours ago that came yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, so You gave yeah. it to us, Charles. Yeah. Crazy. Just, yeah. But it's going to continue, like you said. And I, I, sad, but it's just the way it's going, man. I gotta keep saying, can we go a week without this? It always comes the day before on the day of the show. Oh, dude, we say it every week. We're not gonna go a week without something. Sorry, it, it'll, it'll sucks, be rare. Though. It'll be rare. It really sucks. But Andy, what do you think about those deaths? Yeah, um, Raquel Welch. I've never really seen a movie of hers, but I do know. Um, go to Jerry like after the I go to the restroom. Are plastered everywhere, and also, you know, she came out on an episode of Seinfeld, which she did pretty well on. But Tim McCarver. Man, I loved Tim McCarver. He was um, one of my favorites. He called 23 World Series. Um, he played for countless teams. Well, not countless, like maybe four. And he won the World Series twice. He played with the Cardinals. Um, that's where he won his World Series. But um, also, he called 23 World Series, if y'all can believe that. Um, that's, you know, of course, he was already 81, but he lived a great life. He gave his life to to the game by either playing it or being in the um, broadcast booth. And I was reading about his very first one. He was called in his very first World Series. He was called in as a replacement for Howard Cosell. So I don't know if Cosell had gotten sick or what happened, but they called Tim Carver and he took over for the rest of the World Series until he retired. So um, you know, my condolences to his family and. You know, he, you know, I enjoyed listening to him and he really broke down the game the way that um, for for people to understand, for people that weren't that familiar with the game. So um, that's all I have to say. And, you know, I'm sorry to hear about Tim McCarver passing away. Jerry? Yeah, I mean, he was a great announcer. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, he played with the Cardinals. That's his only thing I didn't like about him. But uh, <laughs> uh, he always had this really soft spoken way of announcing you know what i mean not irritating yeah. you know, like some of these people nowadays um you know rest in peace he was a you know i grew up listening to this guy announce game so as far as raquel welch man that you know she never she said she always she never wanted to be a sex symbol but i guess if you look like that it's kind of hard not to be you know yeah it's hard <laughs> that picture uh what was that movie million beast million year bc or whatever mm -hmm. And that bikini, yeah. it was in Shawshank Redemption, that picture where he escaped. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful movies. woman. Yeah. I mean, yeah. sexy, beautiful woman. Um, I only know a few movies. I know she was in, uh, fuck. Unfortunately, I had to watch Legally Blonde. She was in that, I think, if I remember mm -hmm. right. Um, yeah. I don't know. She was in a bunch of movies. She but, was uh, in Morka Mindy. She was in a lot of shit. Yeah. But 82, man, that's, that's a good life, man. I mean, yeah. I prefer going to my mid nineties, but you know, and like Al said, man, she was beautiful right to the end. Man, so, I mean, she had some work done, but not as bad as some people. So, Madonna. <laughs> no, she did a touch up, but that's about it. You know, touch up here and there. I mean, she nothing wrong with that. No, no, there's nothing wrong with that. The, Dolly the money does the same thing. She doesn't. She got the look money like to look good. I don't like give a fuck. Madonna. Do what you want to yourself. You know? Yeah, but it's when you come out all fucked up that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. Who that person is that you have to be told who that person was. Did you That's ever see that mom and daughter that got so many fucking uh, plastic surgeries they look like a balloon? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! How do they think they're hot? Or it, I, I, it's a sick. It's a sickness, bro. It's a sickness. Yeah, that, it's, that it, this, one time. I, I don't want to get into this shit. Let's. Get and they're called. It. They're called influencers, man. That's I'm just gonna little say. Kim, little Kim don't even look like a, a human being anymore. Oh God, he doesn't. Really? Right, I always, thought, I always thought she was. I always thought she was kind of hot. 
Yeah. yeah. I don't know what happened. What the fuck? Yeah. It's what's she like? What's she like? Four or five? I think she's a little teeny, but yeah, she looked good. Like, I mean, like Al said, it's a sickness. It just yeah, it's, it's a sickness. Crazy. But yeah. What what I gotta say about Raquel Welch? I remember her from I think Mork and Mindy. She was in a few episodes of Mork and Mindy. Yeah. And I, I always thought she was a beautiful lady. I, I looked her up a few months ago. You know, like uh, our good friend Dr. Fuck says, people only talk about people when they die. We should talk about people when they're alive. I agree with them wholeheartedly. So I put up, I love the whole cast to marry with children. Is that why you put that up? <laughs> yes, because Dr. <laughs> Fuck said that about Dick Van Dyke. So I'm like, you know what? Dr. Fuck is right. The fucking great sage of the rock and metal combat podcast. Uh, so I agree with him. But uh, Tim McCarver, man, watching baseball games, that guy, you never felt he was skewed to one side or the other. He was pretty neutral. Sure was. It's not like when you have, like, a, uh, what's that dude's name? He's on ESPN now. What's that fucking? Joe, uh, Buck. Joe Buck. Joe Buck was Buck. always skewed. If you weren't the <laughs> Cardinals, you know, he didn't like your team. He Because his dad was a fucking Cardinals announcer for years. Yeah. So you could tell he had bias against them. So I have a Tim McCarver, so I can unbiased. I like John Smoltz. And I, of course, I love the great Joe Davis. He does that now because he's a Dodger announcer. Took uh, over for the great next, next Vin, Vin the Scully. Dodgers. Vin Scully. Uh, Did you guys ever hear the story about Vin Scully? Yes, Joe yes. Davis got a call. <laughs> and he ignored it <laughs> and then he got a fucking voicemail and Vince Scully says hey this is Ben Scully I just want to congratulate you on your new job I because he called him three times I guess I I struck out <laughs> calling you oh, I'm, <laughs> only, I'm 0 and 3 and getting a hold of you Joe but call me when you get a chance great Vince Scully man fucking Bob Bob the, one of the greatest Bob Bob was games in the catch against Al's Cowboys Oh, 49ers and Dodgers. Jesus. <laughs> oh, shut up, cheaters. Nick and Bird. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's get to Damn the it. next. You say cheaters, y'all won the World Series for playing a 50 game season. I could do that was the hardest season ever. Yeah, there was no fans. The Lakers, <laughs> Lakers, <laughs> Lakers, 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 Lakers won uh, a bubble. Um, the the Lakers is... played 77 fucking games out of 82. Yeah, they fucking played <laughs> with nobody. Nobody in the stands. Uh, LeBron James wanted to fucking leave the fucking bubble because it was so fucking depressing. That is the fucking hardest NBA championship <laughs> to win <laughs> in any fucking game. <laughs> Fuck off, you Laker haters. <laughs> okay, son, son, stand over there. What have you won? We got a good chance this year. Fuck I don't think you'll soon. win. You'll die. Like usual. He's coming soon. KD went there. <laughs> KD went there. Uh, yeah. Now, now the fuck won a high school season. Fucking supersonic original draft pick is still with that. Supersonic. That was a uh, time. Let's, let's get to something that Charles loves. Uh, Richard Dirty. Sambora is in talks with Bon Jovi about a reunion. We have to get out there and do it for the fans. Sambora also briefly touched on singer John Bon Jovi's alleged vocal issues, which were a point of discussion among fans and critics during the band's 2020 tour. John is having a hard time with his voice a little bit, but he needed to take a little bit of a breather. Fuck it. He admitted it that John had problems with the voice. Do you think any member of Kiss would fucking admit that? Al, what do you think about Richie Sambora coming to band and him admitting John had vocal problems? Um, it's just probably in inevitable that he was going to come back, you know. Um, admitting that John has vocal problems, I mean, I mean, shit, water is wet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but the tour it, before it, that was good because I saw it. it what's fine. that? What? Did you this admit house is that? not for sale. That was a good one. And you admit that. I did. I love I, it. I love it. I saw the, your um, I actually saw the uh the, the um the house is not for sale, right? That this house is not for sale. Is that was called yeah, the album. I saw that um a friend of mine uh had an extra ticket for the, it was a, recorded. It we was in, two um, 
There's two what Andys. The fuck? <laughs> what? For real? So, I don't know what the hell just happened. You just split yeah. two. With For real. You're in the black. You got Bizarro, Andy, and Andy. <laughs> Shit, we're trying to be more professional in the Freeform Rock podcast. Because um, we are the sloppiest America's podcast of all time. But come anyway, on, we're trying to be professional on this show, Andy. <laughs> uh, anyway, dude, I mean, um, yeah, John has vocal problems. I saw videos of some videos of the last tour that he did. He couldn't. He had no power in his voice. Couldn't sing, dude. He was like kind of talking, his whispering his way through his songs almost. It was like painful, like to watch that shit, you know. And and Richie's right. He, I'm, well, I mean, I hope he gets his voice resolved or whatever. And if he can't, then you should just retire, dude. You know how much money does he fucking need? You know what I mean? Keep your legacy intact. I mean, what you know? Anyway, I, I don't know. It's uh, I, I like Bon Jovi up until like New Jersey. Like Keep the Faith was good, you know, pretty good. And that was about it. And I didn't really follow him. I've actually these actually these days was a good album too. I like that one. So it and was then, bounce and fucking. This meeting I didn't is go, being recorded. Have a nice, have a nice I didn't day. go after the. I didn't go after these days. That was really it. That was my end. The end for me. Um, when he came out with like uh, sale. Not right. the Better Roses album. No, that's New Jersey. Yeah. No, it's not. Better Roses is on New Jersey. Yes, keep the faith. Right. I'll keep right. the faith. Hey, uh, yeah. yeah, you're right. There you are, Andy. How did I know that? How did I know that? Because I'm that drunk. I drink a whole fucking glass of whiskey, bitch. Charles, Charles is a closet Bon Jovi like. He is. <laughs> hey, dude, he, he admitted that he likes uh, some of like Slippery One Wet and shit like yeah. that, so. I don't hate everybody. Hey, unfortunately, be, be, before Charles and Tr and mm. Jerry there, I've been bugging Lee to do the album Bounce by Bon Jovi for a long time. You're welcome. Andy, what do you think about it? <laughs> oh, well, I really hope that I really hope that he comes back because I do like Richie on board, <laughs> but I really did stop listening to Bon Jovi after New Jersey. After New Jersey, I didn't hear anything after that. Then they started playing country and having different guests. Dude, that like, album is Bon Jovi, were... though. It's not country. <laughs> yeah, but it's, that doesn't it, mean it doesn't to... sound country at all. It's Bon Jovi. I love that. Yeah, but I don't album. like it. So no, I, agree. I think it's yeah. country. Lost Highway is rules. I fucking love that album. No, nah, so I stopped after New Jersey. Dude, have you, you never heard these days with Hey God? Hey, yes, God. I have. What the I don't like it. Been? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be an elitist on this. So, Charles, <laughs> that's like, the bottom line. Stone Cold said so. So, Char because you know what? I call myself, <laughs> hey, out. I got I call myself out of being a dick uh -huh. sometimes. I got an elitist answer for that one, Andy. If you don't like what Mark likes, you're an elitist, basically. That's all that is. That's all that is. <laughs> I know it's because, because you, you, into you, the 90s. You, you guys all tell me something I like sucks. And I've never once told you what you like sucks. Well, that's oh, crazy. Yes, yeah. you say Except the word Abba and Ghost. And, and the thing is, I'm kind of diplomatic on Abba and Ghost. I said, you know what? I can't get into them. It's not bad. But if you like it, enjoy. Well, let's, then... go to the, let's go to the videotape. Well, yeah. <laughs> they know uh, I say that. I say that all the time. I, I, I. You know, I respect other people's choices. Right. I respect other people's opinions. If it doesn't agree with mine, you know, I haven't said you suck in a long time. So fucking go ahead, Charles. That I just didn't like what Bon Jovi did after New Jersey. I just didn't feel me. Well, I, 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 that's fine. That's I do. <laughs> I oh, won't remind cool. you of Savage Garden. Anyway. That Ooh, fuck Savage Garden. <laughs> I will say this. And this is that soccer mom and Mark Alden Taylor news that gets everybody excited. At least maybe they'll sound good now. Yeah. Maybe. Because John Bon Jovi's over. He's done, dude. At least he doesn't do the tapes, but it's like the fucking Vince Neil thing, which I'm sure you're going to stand up and defend. It, it sounded so much better on it, the stadium. No, 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 no. It, it sounded not. so much better on the stadium tour, but that new shit was horrible. No, he did not. You're just an apologist. There's no way. I've seen footage. He sounded the same as he did on this last show. You did it. Oh, shit. Maybe because so I was there and they blasted it so loud that I couldn't hear. But, Could uh, be. Usually, you know what? I will say in defense, because I saw... 
kiss, scab kiss before they rolled tapes. And Paul did sound like shit, but you didn't notice it as much when you're there. I yeah. think when you watch it on the video, you 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 capture it. Worse. It's not pro shot either. It's focus off your on phone, it, dude. More. Yeah, you focus on that more or something. When you're in the element, I don't think you quite notice it as much. But anyway, yeah, whatever. Jeff Leppard rules. Yeah, not really. But with Fuck Bon Jovi, off. you know, hey, whatever. I, I don't hate everything they've done. I would go for a two-hour set of Wanted Dead or Alive, done over and over again. <laughs> over and over. You know what? I would go see them because <laughs> Richard Zambora is going to come out. And I would like to, you know, maybe he can help supplement with, with his vocals because when Rich was on there, man, he, man, he really helped out a lot. Yeah, with he the covered, covered a lot, Phil, he Phil covered X a lot of vocals. Phil X yeah. is a great guitarist, but he, he can't sing like Richie. Yeah, oh, Richie really keep, did fill in a lot. Uh, if Richie comes back, are they going to keep Phil X? Probably. I right? hope so. That'd be cool. You know, like they like Iron Maiden has that what Yannick gears. It doesn't do shit. Uh-huh. Like roll around the stage and looks like an idiot. <laughs> God dang, dude, he does nothing for Iron Maiden. Get the fuck out of there. I saw them live. The other guys are yeah. playing their hearts out. He's just fucking. Like, it looks like I, I'm sorry, retarded people, but you look retarded. <laughs> he's all spinning out his finger and who knows what the hell he's doing with that guitar. He ain't playing it. Charles, what do you think? Uh, are you done, Charles? I don't want to cut you. I mean, it's just Bon Jovi. Who cares? Who cares? Mark does. I do. So, yeah. I do, too. <laughs> uh, Jerry. They're the best fucking band in the world. I mean, unfortunately, I've been, I, was bu- I was busy every time they came, you know, in Nashville on tour, and I missed them. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm going to be busy days in the future when they come too. But the hey, you best. missed Night they're Ranger the, again. They're the what fucking the fuck best. Are All their shit after New Jersey is fucking awesome. You don't need to send me anything, Mark. I'm Messenger. I know it all. It's great. I love it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I love Richie. I love Bon Jovi. Like I said, the 2020 album is shit. It's just weird uh, that. I maybe he didn't practice, do anything, but the 2020 album was horrible. This house is not for sale. It was a good album. I didn't play that title track. Great album. Great album. <laughs> I love this house is not for sale. Great. And uh, Bon Jovi was my very first concert, so I'll always hold that special because he was Bon Jovi was the first band I ever saw on stage, so that was really cool. Oh, with the smile face on it. Nice, but uh. Huh? That's the red uh, have a nice show. day. I Ooh. love that fucking album. Have a nice day. And I say, boom, boom, have a nice day. <laughs> I fucking love that song because they're being sarcastic. Somebody gets in your way, just tell them, have a nice day. That's a fuck off. Fucking great. I love that fucking song. That's fucking clever lyrics, man. Yes. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Right. Fuck off. I don't know if Bon Jovi ever had a fuck off song. Well, have a nice day is kind of li- go listen to that song. When the world gets in my way, I say, have a nice day. Yeah. He's saying fuck off. I'll check Nothing it out. More rock and roll than that, right there. Oh, fuck off. Passive aggressive back. Well, let's get to uh I'm gonna get to a couple more bullshits and then we're gonna get to what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Uh, then we get to let's get into some movie shit because we are sports and movies we already talked a little bit about sports let's talk about a mo- about a movies one of my favorite directors of all time steven spielberg tells tom cruise you saved hollywood's ass top gun maverick might have saved the entire theatrical industry what do you think about that al well that movie was fucking huge man it, it did over did it do a billion oh it, it's like the great fucking movie dude it did a lot of money dude more than anything even more than any disney movie that is i mean i, I watched it you know a couple of times and it's, it's a great movie man I, I i really like it so i mean there could be a little bit of truth in that you know i i, I struggle to find a bad tom cruise movie me too, me too. Like, you know, I think the worst was Eyes Wide Shut, but that I didn't mind. Wasn't that, that bad. But I love that movie. I love. But that I'm movie. saying it wasn't bad. It's not something I wouldn't watch anymore. 
That's a Kubrick uh, movie too. Yeah, I don't like Stanley um, Kubrick that much. Last, either. yeah, his last one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he, I, there's probably some truth to that, you know. So uh, I agree with him because I mean, movies have been lackluster in the past couple of years, to yeah. be honest with you. And this one was like worth going to the movies for, you know. So I saw it there too. Yeah. And again, man, I don't fucking think Tom Cruise, the guy's career has been freaking amazing. I, I mean, agree. I don't know, man. And maybe because he's like cocktail. Like that's Harry 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 McGuire, that's Harry 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 shit. You know, born on the fourth of July. <laughs> I don't know about cocktail. That, that one's kind of dude. Terrible. Every every mission impossible. Hey, that wasn't Elizabeth. Got better. That was, a, that that was, was Elizabeth. She was hot. She was hot. Elizabeth she doing cocktail. Yeah. 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 But just put it this way. Every Mission Impossible movie got better. Every they Fast are. and the Furious on, movie got worse. Charles, Charles, what? Well, come on, Charles. You didn't like the way Tom Cruise flipped the bottles? <laughs> that was amazing. Was silly. It, <laughs> but, dude, he and, did the bottle alcohol flipping, dude. Oh, wow. You and, know, Tom Cruise. He yeah, he does all his own stunts. Risky <laughs> like business, dude. Flipping. You know, he's a method actor. He had sex with Rebecca D. Mornay, so it looked real in the movie. Yeah, yeah. good for hey, I, good I like for him. Man. I like the interview with the vampire. That's a good one too. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. That might be one that I didn't like. Actually, okay. Uh, why? One. I like him as a bad sucks. guy. Magnolia was kind of weird, but that was cool too. But uh, Vanilla Sky. Oh, I love Vanilla Sky. That would be Cruise. Yeah, you know? that's a good movie. That's a trip. My yeah, favorite yeah, movie is, is that. Edge of yeah, the, the newest besides Talk on Maverick is Edge of Tomorrow. Good movie. That yeah. movie is fucking great. Rock of Ages. I love Rock, I like of, Rock of Ages too. I have it. I think Charles just found it. I think Charles just found it. I think Charles just found it. He made that the turn. I he like that turd. movie. He was good at it. You can't say Ugh. he wasn't. Arnold <laughs> Schwarzenegger was in there. You know what sucked was the thing where they did I Can't Fight This Feeling. They made it gayer than it already was. That was funny as fuck, man. But I'm they sorry. still made it gayer than it already it was. It was funny, dude. It was supposed to be comedy, dude. No offense to gay people. I have lots of gay friends. Jeez. Charles, what do you think about that shit? I mean, that's, that's cool. I mean, I, I buy it. I buy it. I mean, Spielberg says it. I mean, makes sense to me. Huge money. I mean, Top Gun just rules as a period. Doesn't matter. First one, second one, whatever. They keep making it, too. I'd be happy with that. So, he's always been a big star, man. I, and one movie he made that I really, really, really like, I don't think it got enough love, was Valkyrie. Oh, that was a yeah, great movie. movie. That was a yes. fucking great movie. Yeah. And Legend. Remember Legend? Oh, wait, that's another one. Yeah, the Last Samurai. Last Ooh, Samurai. Fucking okay. great movie. Yeah. I have that over here somewhere. Oh. But anyway, Top Gun, yeah, it's great. And he probably did. But I still think movies are going to move more to streaming. I'm sorry. Fuck it's, that shit. It, it's not, wait a minute, but it's not because of the fucking movies. It's because of the tier programming they're doing at like AMC and they're now they're charging you for good seats. Right. Yeah. The theater and stuff like that. The, the theater industry itself is going to ruin it. Well, Regal's already closed a lot of uh, places. Well, AMC is going to be closing a lot too if you got to pay extra just to sit in a good seat. Yeah. So. Yeah. And to touch on what. Um, but what, you get the um, A list, it's only $25.99 a month. You get to see three movies a week. Whoa, wait, a wait. Good... So if you go see a movie and there's only five or six people in there, you can't pick your own fucking seat. No. You can, but you have to pay extra for it. Yeah, they do tier yeah. seating in AMC now. So yep. I, I heard of that, but I don't know how it works. But that fucking blows, dude. Yeah, it but does. they should try to get people into the theaters because there's not people, there's not that yeah. many people going to the theaters right now. Instead, they're doing the opposite. Yeah, you know, ten dollars for a fucking thing of candy. You figured that would be enough, I guess not. Uh, oh, I I bring my own candy, and I, I do you too. Ever my got, wife brings it for this episode. We saw this movie called The Sixth Man with the Damon Wayans, and I had this fucking remember those starter jackets in the '90s with the big pouches. Yeah. I had the 49ers ones. So I put peppermint schnapps. I put tequila. I put 12 pack of beer in there. 
And my friends decided they didn't want to drink, so I drank the whole shit. Because I go, fuck, I ain't wasting my money. I blacked out. <laughs> I just blacked up. But uh, let's get out of this because uh, Richie yeah. Sambora is cool. Did I miss anybody? <laughs> Here, did I miss anybody? Richie Sambora again. Did I miss anybody? Tom Cruise, buddy. Oh, Tom uh, Cruise. Tom Cruise, Jerry. Thank yeah. you. Jeez. No, I mean, you guys said it all enough. I mean, he's, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't doubt that at all. He saved it. I mean, he blew away fucking, uh, that movie blew away Jurassic Park, man. I mean, that's a huge uh-huh. franchise, so. Yeah. Uh, Andy, did you talk on Tom Cruise? I don't think he oh, did well, either. Oh, well, <laughs> no, last... no, I'm saying keep going. I'm saying who's next. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. well, the last Tom Cruise movie I saw was The Outsiders. What? So I really don't have much to say. Whoa, whoa. What? I'm not a very big movie guy, so the last real movie I saw with Tom Cruise was The Outsiders. What? Yeah, you never excited. saw Born on the Fourth of July? No, I've never seen Born on the Fourth of July. Oh I know my the God. Of it, but Do you like Jack Nicholson? Yeah, I do. You like Kevin Bacon? Yes, but I've never seen a few good men. <laughs> you need to go watch that movie, Andy. I don't have to. I'm fine. Do it. You know what? No, 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 no. You would, no, no. Andy. I know you. You will enjoy that fucking movie. Uh, you would like Days of would. Thunder better. You like Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would like when him Days and Nicole. Days of Thunder rules, man. It's he like fucking rules on a car. Far and away rules too. I like Far and Away. I like that I, movie. That wasn't bad. Far and Away because that showed my ancestors in Oklahoma because my grandma's grandpa freaking did that land rush like in far and away to get the stake their land in Oklahoma. And uh, he lost her house because he was a gambler and a fucking alcoholic. But I'm not. I'm good. But uh, <laughs> who needs to talk now? Uh, maybe one day I'll go back and see, you know, different movies. But I just I just wasn't interested in him for some reason. I just didn't. You never saw but, Risky uh, Business? Oh, well, yeah, but wasn't The Outsiders about the same time? Yeah, but risky. I think right afterwards. Risky, right bi- after. risky business is all about I've, Tom now. Oh well, yeah, I've seen Risky Business. It was, and I've seen that movie after. going all the way, or no wait, all the right moves. Yeah, but do, you never saw Top Gun. No, nah, I nah, I never saw the first Top Gun. Oh my god, good stuff, man, dude. And I'm fine. I do I love have you, Andy. Story. I love you so much, Andy. But you need to watch Top Gun before you make an opinion on Tom Cruise. You're gonna get plastered. With What's that movie where he had the show. precogs? The precogs. Precogs. Where he, they they have people <laughs> no, thank Minority Report. Yeah, I'll pass. We need to see fucking Minority Report. I'll pass. That's, a, that's, that's a, a great one. Guy. Minority oh Report God. rules. That's a good I movie. mean, if you want me to start watching Tom Cruise movies, you don't start with three cocks. <laughs> but you don't know. They see, they see that somebody's going to commit a crime before they do it. It's and, pre-con- and Tom Cruise goes, this is fucked up. Yeah. 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 It's a fuck. Edge of Tomorrow. Do you like who's fucking uh, the Johnson's yeah. wife? Who? <laughs> the girl in Edge of Tomorrow. What Olivia is Wilde, ain't it? It's an Olivia Wilde. No, oh, it's not. A, she was in the house. The girl the, that was in the this Quiet Place. The Quiet Place, yeah. Yeah, what that's, the fuck is her name? I can't think of it, but yeah. That's I, but she was in Edge of Tomorrow. Fucking great actress. But uh, Jerry, do you have anything about say about Tom Cruise? <laughs> I just did, man. Yeah, okay, did. well, I'm gonna. No, get... right, I do want to mention I am looking forward to this, the next Mission Impossible. It's gonna be two two movies actually. Yeah, so and I'm amazing. looking and I'm looking forward to Precox, the new movie <laughs> with Tom Cruise. That's gonna rule. <laughs> did, I mean, say pre, did I say Cox or Cox? Yeah. <laughs> I wish will be played it sounded like Precox. Precox. Theater in the downtown. <laughs> uh, fucking whiskey, some powerful soon. drug. Precox. Fuck. <laughs> All right, but well, let's get in this episode. I'm gonna quit out. Fucking Vince Neil looks oh, like. Wait a minute, minute. no Sammy Hagar news. We don't Sam- have well, you. Take that, Charles. Do you, have Sammy it? Dolly? What are we gonna do? This <laughs> no journey Dolly. news. Oh, I have yeah. journey oh, news. Oh but it's thank stupid. you. Don't no don't. Yes, thank you. None. I'm skipping Girl. it for Charles. Thank you. Ah, it's not That's real news, great. anyways. There yeah. wasn't any Hagar news this week, unfortunately. Mark Daly, who's now Sammy Daly. <laughs> Don't Sammy have any news for you this week. Yep. 
Good old Sammy Daly. You gotta <laughs> own that one, buddy. <laughs> yeah. ah, Lee, guy loves him, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> I love Mark. He, he rules. I don't yeah, know if he good. loves him. I don't know because he always posts stuff just to get under people's skin. Yeah, he posts the bear sometimes. Yeah, he does. So one day he's gonna have to dress up. Do you love Sammy Hagar or not? I asked him that, didn't I? Now you gotta I, go like first. I, I said who, because he's like saying back and forth on both of them. I think I asked him, dude. Where does your allegiance lie? And he didn't say, <laughs> Where does your allegiance lie? Allegiance. <laughs> Either you're with me or you're against me. I don't care. I like both. <laughs> you can say both and I'd be okay. So it's cool. It's cool. Like I tell Mark, all the other Mark all the time. If you like it, man, I'm cool with it. That's the same thing with ball. me. I am no. not an elitist. I just do things for comedy. I mean, he is horrible. But I mean, hey, if you like it, good. <laughs> I mean, All Mark, right, Mark likes to do about precox. So, I, mean, hey, I, mean, I love the precox. <laughs> Whatever that means. We're on. Uh, yeah, maybe get into the episode. Huh? Maybe. Let's get into the episode, man. Let's start with uh, we're doing our top 11 Canadian artists or bands. We didn't specify any genre. So, Benny, you guys pick, pick Celine Dion, you're idiots. Just saying that right now. But uh, let's start with you, Al. What's your number 11? You say people don't suck. I didn't, well, I, I, I have to because it's a show. Near, far, wherever you are. Oh, well, Canada. Oh, Canada. That's a great <laughs> movie, by the way, isn't it? Titanic. That's yeah. a great. Titanic? Dude. And Jack it. had room to get on that fucking plaque. Fucking Rose is a bitch. All right. Much. Yeah. All right. I would have put in mind drawing her. Al or what? That's just Al, I asked up, Al right? what his number 11 is. And he started singing O Canada. Oh, no. I was singing <laughs> O Canada. Oh, well, whoever. <laughs> Jerry well, was doing my... Celine Dion's greatest hits. Go ahead, Al. Couldn't tell the difference, could you? <laughs> uh, my number 11, I heard. Um, I got into these guys. I, I tried these guys out like the past like couple years because I always heard Eddie Trunk talk about them, and I never knew who, never had heard them. And I, because Eddie Trunk talked about, it, I was like, let me check these guys out because he's always like giving them love and stuff. So my num- my number eleven is gonna be Coney Hatch. Um, and I checked out. You know, they have only four albums. Uh, the first two are like the best, man. Um, real great melodic hard rock. Uh, I think it's the first ones from like eight, 1982. They were on uh, Anthem Records, which is Rush's label. Yeah. And, um, and uh, it was produced by Kim Mitchell, who might come up in my uh, list a little bit later. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, man. I, I, I dig these guys now, man. I, I went out and got the first two albums. And um, the third album, I, I, I sampled it. And uh, it's a bit more a- a- AOR, kind of like... They went a little more kind of commercial on it. Um, it's not bad, but it's not like on par with the first two, in my opinion. Um, Coney Hatch, the first one, self-titled. Out of Hand is the next one. Came out in 83. Um, if you're going to try to get into these guys, I suggest getting checking out those first two albums, man. Great. If you like melodic hard rock, uh, great. And then um, uh, Andy Curran, uh, uh, who's the bass player and singer, in that band, he now has a project with uh, Alex Lifeson, um, Envy of None, which is not really a hard rock band. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Okay. A little more like, it's a little more electronic kind of like yeah. that. Uh, kind of reminds me of Garbage a little bit. Garbage, with a lot no, like garbage. garbage is way better. That that image, yeah, that no, is I, garbage. I'm not saying I'm not saying that they're better than Garbage. I'm just saying that they remind me of Garbage a little bit. Oh. Yeah. You I know, can't even listen to Ivia Dunn. It's like Victor. I didn't like that either. Um, yeah, well, you know, Alex did his hard rock thing. He wants to do other shit, so I respect what he wants to do. That's and, just uh, like George Lynch. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That George yeah. Lynch was rough, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Coney Hatch is my number 11. So, What's your number 11, like- Charles? I'll be right back. Uh-huh. And after you, Charles, go to Andy if you don't finish. My number 11. This will be the shock one from uh, coming from me. 
<laughs> I actually did this one uh, kind of a dead. My whole list in general is actually not necessarily in order, actually. I just picked 11. Uh, a lot of them are just, some of them mean something to me, and then some of them I just recognize their greatness, and I'm not necessarily <laughs> a mega fan. And number 11 would be that, but this was also, I'm going to dedicate my number 11 to my late mother. Because for some reason, she was a fan of this guy. And the reason why I say it seems strange is because she wasn't like an older lady or anything when she liked the guy. My number 11 is Paul Anka. Wow. <laughs> Just put your head on my shoulders. You know what? Actually, I looked into him. Do you know how many good songs this guy wrote? Yeah, a lot. And to the 80s, actually. He, he wrote This Is It with Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On Michael Jackson's last work, oh, wow. he, wrote the, he wrote the theme song, to the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wrote the English uh, lyrics to "My Way" by Frank Sinatra, and of course, his biggest hit was "Diana." But for some reason, my mom loved Paul Anka. You know, um, when I was in New York City this Dedicated past her, October, my number eleven, yeah. Paul Anka. Go ahead. Andy. Um, yeah, when I was in New York was City, your number, one October, second. Where's your number 11, Charles? Paul Anka. Cool. Andy? Okay, go ahead. And um, we were, uh, my wife and I got tickets to the Drew Barrymore show. And mm. we got excited because Paul Anka got out of a limo and he went inside the studios because we thought Paul Anka was going to be on the Drew Barrymore show. We're like, oh, man, that's pretty awesome. We get to see him perform. But he went in there and he went to a different studio. And I was kind of bummed because I thought I was going to see him perform, which I thought would be pretty cool. My yeah. mom loved Paul Anka. So, so did mine. Yeah. That's why I can't stand Cookie Monster vocals. I need harmonies because I grew, grew up on that shit. Like the Everly Brothers, Paul Anka, Buddy Holly. That's why I can't stand a bit. But he's but, like, he was, he was probably actually a, a more incredible songwriter. Well, yeah, he was yeah. a performer, so yeah. Mm -hmm. he's a yeah, he's uh gets overlooked a lot, unfortunately. So, he really does, yeah. Paul Anka, my number eleven. So on to the next, next guy, Andy. Yeah, my number eleven is going to be a band that came out in the nineties, um, some forty one, which played the pop punk, um, music. Um, the first two albums were just fantastic even though the chords were all the same the music was all the same but the lyrics were pretty good a little bit more above the other um pop pop punk band pop pop uh, pop punk bands that came out at that time because there was a whole slew of them that was coming out after yeah, they Green were Day. better than good charlotte i give you that oh they were way better than good charlotte good but charlotte yeah but somebody one is my number 11 jerry um, my number 11 is, uh, I like them both with the question mark and without the question mark. That's the guess who. Good um, one. I mean, if you haven't heard American Woman, what fucking island are you from? You know what I mean? Everybody's heard of that fucking song. Yeah. I mean, great albums. Canned Weed, American Woman, Share the Land, all good stuff. Man, the great Randy Bachman. Yeah. Later went on to do uh, fucking Bachman Turner Overdrive, another good band. I was, I was yeah, American Woman. Yeah, American Woman by uh, <laughs> Lenny Kravitz, right? Yeah, Lenny Kravitz <laughs> yeah, that's a great, but the Austin Power soundtrack, right? Nah, but anyway, yeah, that's my number eleven. You know, great, 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 band. great, great band, man. Yeah, yeah. my they're, number eleven, dude, they're, they're Canadian legend, man. That that band is, you know. I think my 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 eleventh could be more rock and metal, hard rock, whatever. I'm Same here. Pick, I'm gonna pick the Killer Dwarfs. Number 11, stand tall, stick to you. I remember when my neighbor bought that fucking tape. And I remember seeing that video. They were all fucking, they all call themselves dwarfs. They all, Daryl dwarf, whatever dwarf, dwarf, dwarf. Russ. Russ dwarf. You know, I am I used to be friends with the drummer of that band, his real name. But uh, I lost three Facebook accounts, so he doesn't think I'm real anymore. But uh, that guy was a cool dude. He's a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. He likes pirates. Fucking great band, the Killer Dwarfs. Fucking, I love that band. I can't wait till they come out with a new album. That's my number eleven. Mm. 
Let me get to you, Al. What's your number 10? Oh, wait, Jerry, did I get, I got you, right? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Okay, then you, Al, number 10. All right, my number 10 is a band that came out in the early 90s. Um, I dropped their name, actually, uh, I think on Andy's show last week, I think. Uh, some, some show I was on. Uh, I'm Mother Earth. Um, they're Eddie like an Trunk. alternative. Yeah, What's Eddie that? Trunk. Eddie Trunk, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. And I, I told you to share that shit. You were like one of the first few guests on there that said yeah. that band. They were talking, uh, yeah, it was him and, and a couple of guys, the Canadian. Uh, they were talking oh, about Canadian. The band. dudes from the freaking um, uh, Slash Band, you know, uh, those two guys. Yeah. The one dude, I forgot what band he's in, but yeah. he w- The one guy was in. Um, uh, he left though, but he was in uh, um, Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah, he was whatever. the third guy. Yeah, Five Finger Death. Yeah. All right. So anyway, like I'm Mother Earth. They're an alternative like metal band. They blend like think of like if you take like Jane's Addiction um, and blend it with kind of like Santana and like Primus a little bit like that. Yeah. Um, it's like really kind of because like, it has like a Latin. It's like if you. If you go like to a poetry reading and then and then have like music behind it, that's kind of like how it was. Like they I heard like their early shows were kind of like that, but that's kind of like the way James Addiction was too. Um, so the uh, the guitar player is Jack Tanna and a drummer is Christian Tanna, the two brothers. And Jack Tanna is a very underrated guitar player. If you ever listen to his band, he's an incredible guitar player. Um, he's not really they're not known really here in, in the United States. Um, but I suggest seeking out their first album, Dig, which came out in uh, 93. Uh, it's a killer album. It's all, uh, oh, here's the blend. It's like if it, Jane's Addiction, The Doors, and Santana were thrown in a blender, you know, I think that's kind of like how they are, you know. And um, there's like one song on there actually called uh, So Gently We Go on the first album. Um, it almost kind of reminds me of The End by The Doors. Kind of has the same kind of vibe. You know, if you like that song, you'll dig that song. And uh, it's got like Latin production, uh, Latin percussion on there. And, you know, it's really cool, man. So I dig this band. I, but I only really liked the first album. After that, they got uh, Edwin, who was the original singer, left. And he actually went on to sing on Alex Lifeson's Victor album. Yeah. Um, some of the songs on there. And um, they got like some different singer. And I they kind of went a little more commercial for my taste. Um, but the first album is classic and I will, I'll always love it. So, uh, I'm mother earth. That's my number 10. Well, you said Victor and I just checked out Charles. What's your number? Uh, 10? <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's get, let's, let's sing along. Uh, oh, 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 everybody know that one. Loving every minute of it. Loving every minute of it. Love every boy. minute of it. Love Loving every minute of it. Turn Love that boy. dial. Turn me on. Stop it like a motor. Make me run. Loving every minute. <laughs> now they're, num- they're my number 10, though, because I, there's something about Mike Reno that always pissed me off. Like, I think it was maybe. <laughs> the headband? Ten- head <laughs> yeah, head well, head. that. Yeah, he looked like <laughs> the, red, the red pants. The red light was in the Jane Fonda video all the time. Like he was going to be in that. Then he put on a lot of weight, which I'm not knocking that. I got a little weight. Turn be, but he still sounds great. But he was another one that came out and said, Nirvana killed my career. No, you no, guys were probably right. Probably you, guys right. Were, you guys were done way before that. No, no they I think, weren't. I think Warren killed Loverboy's <laughs> career. Three I think they were four, already eight. done by then. So. I always say he was a little unrealistic. They were kind of flashish in the pan, but I did like the songs that were great. I liked the working for the way everybody's working for the weekend. Do they want to lose? Come on. They got a bunch of hits, man. They They they, they, they they were at one point, right? Hot girls in love. I fell out. It fell out good for Pearl Jam. This could be the night. Good four year run. This could be the night. That song for the Top Gun soundtrack? Kid is Hot Tonight. Yeah, that was from the first album. I know, the good one. Turn I mean, Me they, Loose. Uh, oh, Turn Me Loose is great. Rules. Yeah, that album, Get Lucky and uh, 
keep it up. Ladies of the 80s? Come that's, on. That's man. a three good album. But I'm just saying that they I fell off that. way before Pearl Jam, though. Oh, yeah. And they all did. that. Come on. Yeah, they did. No. By the late I mean, 80s, they were like done making right. hits. But right. they weren't good enough to keep that kind of level of popularity or um the Canada they're gods. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, in Canada, in Canada it's a bit different, you know. I mean, they're they're probably still considered top top heap over there, you know. Yeah. It's but you yeah. know, America America's fickle, like it's oh, here today, God, gone man. today, you know. I mean it's, see you later. You yeah, know, so they did. I'm not trying to say they were like an absolute one hit wonder. I just I know no, no. that later they on he was, still, he was still saying stuff like, Oh, you know, and now you guys were done way before that, you know, yeah. not necessarily done. Uh, yeah, in Canada, I agree, whichever, but they fell yeah, off. I heard their new point. singles, their new singles are really good. I, you would know it, of course. Well, of course, I, I would know follow it. it. Yeah, but that's my number 10 lover boy. So we got to your number 10, Al. And Andy. Yeah, I, I'm Mother Earth. Yeah. Okay. Andy, Ch- yeah, uh, Jerry, you're number 10. Oh, well, I'm I, 10. I, I can wait. No, Andy, go ahead. No, <laughs> Andy, go ahead. Okay. okay. I was so, asking um, because Charles keeps going off and on. It changes your your way you're going. So, oh, Andy, go okay. ahead. Uh, my number 10 is going to be Anne Murray, a great country pop singer of the 70s and 80s, and it's so funny because when we started to do this Canada thing, I was looking for different artists, and I forgot how much I enjoyed her music. Her her voice was great. You know, she did songs like Danny's Song, You Needed Me, Could I Have This Dance? It was it was adult contemporary, but also she did her own voiceover on uh, Family Guy. I don't know if y'all are familiar with this episode. I when, watched um, every Family Guy freaking. Oh, when Stewie, when when Stewie dressed up like her, yeah. and I think he sang Snowbird. Yep. And then um, they went to go find her, and go go thank her for all this music, and then she I says, "What well, Pete's dragon?" Yeah, and then um, she said that she's not the songwriter; she just performs it. So they murder her, <laughs> and they drag her out of the house. It's a pretty twisted episode but it was pretty cool that Anne Murray you know voiced that the, the, the voiced it for them you know yeah. uh, that was being a good sport and Anne Murray I mean she's in the Canadian Music Hall of Fame she's got dozens and dozens of hits so Anne Murray is my number 10 yeah Here. actually she's got, a, she's got a great voice that's a good pick Andy. Yeah. You know, my, my sister uh, danced can I have this da- last can I have this dance I think at her wedding so that was kind of nice uh, Oh yeah, I like that at my cousin's wedding because they couldn't afford a DJ, so I was the DJ. So I played that for their dance song. Cherry and other, other songs they didn't like. Row on number ten. Yeah, number ten. My number ten is a band I, did, I never even knew was Canadian. I always thought they were uh, American, but uh, Saga. Um, Great band. Term, the, the Silent Night, Worlds Apart, and Heads or Tails. I, I knew those three albums a lot. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows Worlds Apart because of uh, On the Loose. Loose. That was like a big MTV. On the Loose, hit. yeah. On the Loose. Uh, and I was amazed to find out looking through this Wikipedia, and they have come out with an album just about every year up until 2014. I never knew that. Yeah. Dude, they have a ton of albums. I completely lost track of them, probably in the late 80s. They're, huge. Man, They're huge in Germany, dude. Oh, Are they? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not really, I'm not the hugest prog fan, but they were a pretty good prog band. If that's what we want to call them. I guess they would call prog, right? Yeah. You yeah. Call them. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, you know, yeah, I, was, I didn't know they were Canadian. Actually, I always well, thought dude, they were American. You like, so yes, like, Rush and Saga. Come on. You're a prog I only like the Trevor Raven. I like the Steve Howe area, yes, but I'm, I'd prefer the Trevor Raven. It's more rock. Well, well so anyway, I am too, but there's nothing shit up on the Steve Howe. But area. anyway, yeah. I, like I said, I was really amazed to find out how many albums they got. I'd never even. You know, like I heard of them past 1990. So, but they were a great band in that in that time period I mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. They had some really good stuff. So that's my number ten saga. Oh, my number ten. Andy's gonna have a hard on for this one. It's Neil Young. He's my number wow. ten. I love Neil Young. I fucking love. I don't like his rockabilly era. But well, he anything, made one rockabilly album. Yeah, I don't like that album. <laughs> but everything else I like by Neil Young. 
So that's my number 10. So well, then we get to your number nine, Al. Uh, my number nine is going to be, um, they're actually they're actually considered pioneers in the speed metal genre, a band called Exciter. Um, they got their name for a Judas Priest song. And uh, first album came out in 83. Uh, killer album, man. Heavy Metal Maniac. And it's real speed metal, like, but like, great good good singing it's not like harsh anything like that it's just good like i mean you, i think it came out a full six months before kill em all came out actually uh -huh. um but but uh they don't get obviously they don't get the credit like metallica does um but um if you're into that like type of kill em all era metallica check this band out man they're, they're great exciter first couple albums are great uh heavy metal made the first one uh violence and force is the second one uh which came out in 84 real real good stuff man so i gotta throw them on the list because i remember um again when i used to go over to my friend's house his older brother besides the big four he branched out into a lot of different you know bands and shit i discovered a lot of like heavy bands from him and this was like what well, he had had like um he had heavy metal maniac uh in his collection and i remember um my friend playing that for me man i was like yeah it's pretty cool dude it's like it's almost like kill them all but you know a little more uh not as gruff as like the way james sings on there it's actually a little more uh has a uh, you know i'd say it's the same type of rawness in the music but uh sings a little different it's a little it's it's accessible let's just say that so so check them out exciter this is my number nine man andy what's your number nine? Oh, wasn't it charles trump well i'm sure i'm sure you guys keep Puck, going i'm, sure I'm not Puck moving what do you mean no andy, guys, i'm a couple times you two, you two, you two charles, have to so what's your nine i'm it not doing moved. nothing the video <laughs> has <laughs> moved in sections charles so what's your number nine then andy then fucking jerry all right fucking jerry well, Jerry, yeah. I love you. Fuck Fucking off. Jerry? Right, <laughs> well, Andy, what's your number nine? Or Charles, right, what's your go. number nine? Okay. All right. My number nine. Okay, Mark Daly, you asked for it. Voivod. <laughs> Great yeah. metal band you did earlier today. Yes. Voivod. Yes. Great metal band out of Quebec. They did a pretty, good, pretty cool cover of Astronomy to Mine. Fucking awesome, bro. Yeah. We mean, yeah. uh, oh, I forgot. I don't, you don't like, like that. Dude. You don't like the Sid Barrett Pink Floyd. No, I don't. Like, dude, you check like out the Boy Vibe. That's why. You like the Boy Vibe. Uh, I haven't heard Boy Vibe, so I can't give you a true opinion. Well, I'm not going to say what you say, and you have to. I'm just going to say maybe you want <laughs> I never say you have to. You just did in the episode. You told Andy you have to watch Tom Cruise. Charles, well, you do have to watch <laughs> Tom Cruise. <laughs> send him my, send him my That's point. different. Send him 20 yeah, YouTube me, videos afterwards. It's like, like if you does. don't watch Back to the Future and you don't watch fucking Top Gun, what the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, come uh, on, man. I'm fine. Check, well, do you watch out. Top Gun? And then get I don't want to watch Top Gun. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck did I do? Vanilla Sky. <laughs> it's okay. I don't and have to watch Top Gun. Edge of Tomorrow. I don't have to. Minority okay. Report is a Steven Spielberg movie. Oh, for real? Yes. Oh, that changes everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so watch Minority Report. Because Steven Spielberg directed Tom Cruise in that movie. Oh, Charles, Andy keep going. With the burn, man. That was awesome. Voiv Voivod. Voivod. One, man. Check them out. That'll you show up in a few it. more lists, I think. So, yeah. Andy, what's your next one? Nine, yeah, my uh, my number nine. I recently bought an album by this guy, and I, I was looking for it. And I've been really enjoying him, Aldo Nova. I was um, about Aldo Nova. Yeah, I man. Um, uh, his guitar playing and his music. I mean, he plays almost every instrument on on his albums. He's a very talented guy, and he keeps his music pretty much between um, melodic rock and hard rock. So. I've been enjoying him, and I've been streaming his stuff lately, and he's a pretty talented guy. He's got a lot of music out there that I didn't know he had, so there's a lot I need to listen to by him. So so that's my um, number nine is Aldo Nova. Uh, Jerry. <laughs> I where you guys are going to start co-vomiting. But 
I fucking love this woman with all my my heart. I love her voice. I love her music. Well, more sorry. No, <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin. Ah, love her voice. Love, love her music. Dude. She's got a great, <laughs> great stuff. Hey, she made fun of herself. Made fun of herself in that Super Bowl commercial. That was pretty yeah. cool. So uh, I love her voice. Always have beautiful woman. You know, and fuck you because I did go see two Love Affairs, Mark. So fuck you, and they were both good. You <laughs> did see Love Affair twice. Yes. You're an idiot. But, uh, I'm sorry. That is fucking, dude. Did you turn in your man card when you went in a love affair? Dude, I saw a bunch of beautiful women there, dude. Oh, oh yeah, dude. dude. Seriously. There's a bunch of hot chicks that love other hot chicks. I bet you <laughs> love Jewel. Dude, that was the, big, that Jewel, was the biggest. Jewel was your shit, right? That's the biggest misconception by you guys, man, is that's all a bunch of oh. fucking women. So fucking untrue. I support um, Jerry and his... his Forward, <laughs> by the way, but, I applaud and, and, that. but speaking of, I mean, speaking of just Sarah, dude, she's always had real beautiful songs with a beautiful voice, yeah. and so you know, fuck you, Mark, and uh, fuck you again. That's my number. Was that 10? Nine. Number nine. nine. My number nine, I think you already touched on it, Jerry. It was Saga. Yeah. I don't know, they're Canadian, great Canadian progressive rock band. I fucking love them. So, when we get to your number eight, uh. Al, Canada's hit making machine, Brian Adams. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. I mean, from 83 to 91, Ooh, the guy was just a hit making machine, dude. You know, cuts like a knife, uh, reckless, great album. Um, waking up the neighbors into the fire. The guy had a lot. I mean, the new just, albums are really good, too. too. Yeah. I, I, after that, like, you know, I kind of didn't follow him much, but. I'm sure that I'm sure he still puts out quality music. Um, his big, oh, yeah. huge hit making days aren't really here anymore, but that doesn't mean that the music's not good. But because everybody man, wants to listen to Sam Smith and fucking uh, 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 a new what's that I band know, from BTS? Okay, okay. I don't know, but Brian Adams, man, I, I I like a lot of his stuff actually. I I saw him in concert in '91 at Mass Square Garden. Is it the fire? No, that no, was that, waking, that up, was waking, that up, was waking up the neighbors. I saw the Into so. the Fire tour where the Hooters opened up. That was a great fucking... And you know who storm. opened up was a band called The Storm, which was ex-members yes. of Jerry. Oh, Greg Raleigh. Greg Raleigh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Anthony Dunbar was in there. No, yeah, he was in there, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, um, well, no, uh, Steve and Ross Smith Valerie. was in Ross there. Valerie is in there. Ross Valerie. That's the Ross Steve Valerie, Steve Smith. And he got oh, wow. screwed. Yeah. He left, and then another drummer came in. But, yeah, that was the opening band, man, which surprised me, which was cool, you know. And uh, But, yeah. I think Brian I saw Adams, that. Show, yeah. not, that was one. That's one of those concerts where, like, dude, you knew, like, every fucking song, dude. It's yeah. like, you know. But Brian Adams is my number eight. That's it. I, I guess I go to you. This year with Joan Jett. Yeah. I go to you. Fucking Joan Jett's open for everybody in the last On year. my video... Andy is next, but I guess I go to Charles. What's your number eight? Yes. He wrote War Machine, too. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah. He did. Like that, um, that that's gets, a great song. That gets credit in my book. Brian Adams <laughs> rules. Yes, he, it does. He, totally. he, is, he is higher than what else. One of my top Kiss songs ever, by the way. Hell uh, yeah. Number eight. This is going to that. I'm not a mega fan of the artist, but I recognize their talent and importance and that would be Joni Mitchell coming in at number eight absolutely oh, great <clears throat> genre and I don't care make your fucking faces if you want Mark you like hey, I got no problem I got no like. problem with that. hey Lee no problem with that. Gissman loves you Joni Mitchell uh, even I mean Janet Jackson's going on record and says she was influenced by Joni I Mitchell like you that one that, song they why. took Paradise made a parking lot but, well, that's uh, probably because you haven't heard anything else. Yeah, yeah I think she, she's a pretty. I mean, I, I'm not. I haven't deep dove on her, but I do know she's very important to that genre and mm -hmm. uh, huge name coming out of Canada. So Joni Mitchell, uh, Andy, number eight. Uh, yeah, my number eight. I've, I've got several um uh, guitar heroes on here. This one, Pat Travers. Yes. Uh, Pat Travers is fantastic. Fucking um, rules, I've, dude. His albums. I've seen him live once and man, he just rips it up, man. Holy shit, um, yes. I went ahead and um, I think I did a live show 
with um, Al and um, Kate, and I was able to find that um, live album that that Al talked about go, on there. Go for what go for what you know. Yeah, yeah, dude, dude that so, is like one of the most killer live albums ever, bro. I'll, I might get to that later. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, I played it. I um, heard it this past weekend when I was getting ready to to place these um, Canadian artists. So. Yeah, um, Pat Travers. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, so Jerry, you're next, right? My turn. You're number eight. Yeah. Um, it was mentioned earlier. Uh, Lover Boy, great band. Um, Queen of the Broken Hearts. When it's over, Lucky Ones. Turn me loose. Work hit after weekend. hit after hit. Mike Reno, Ann Wilson, Almost Paradise. I mean, I love that the, song, Almost Paradise. In the eighties, they were they were big shit. I mean. I was out, I was living in San Francisco when uh, I can't think of his name the keyboard player was the keyboard player or the bass player his boat capsized and yeah bass player, player. Bass player. Bass they, player. they never found oh, his body they still They're never fine. found his body and it's kind of sad how that happened yeah so. it's sad but uh, anyway that's my next big good band and you know the, and you know and you know who the biggest surprise of that band for me is Paul Dean. And, and I never like thought of him as like a great drummer until I saw some videos of him the oh, drummer yeah, so. in Lover Boy. I saw some drum solos he did, and he was fucking awesome, dude. I mean, not like your typical, like, I mean, he was like jazzy, like, doing all sorts of stuff, like, almost like Neil Peart, like, kind of, like, drumming, dude. I was like, wow. I never thought he was, like, that good, you know? But he's, he's a killer drummer, man. So Yeah, and I, I, mentioned, I mentioned Paul Dean, man, great guitar player. Yeah, yeah so great guitar we, player. So before I get to my number eight, I'm going to put our uh, group... Our group put a, a lot of fucking Canadian bands asked for the number one Canadian band. We got Roger Norris said Sword. Brian Bellow said The Tragically Hip. Keith Ashcraft said Gordon Lightfoot. Dude, you like fucking, what's his name? Fucking what's Shandy. wrong with that? Well, uh, Andy, your wife said Justin Bieber. Molly Rodriguez. She was freaking around. She didn't mean it. <laughs> well, it, she says you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> so then we got my wife who said Alanis Morissette, Ryan Van Over to the Guess Who's, Dave Gabriel Vini, Stryker, Eric Arms, Jordan Kickax, Roth Fiera, Dr. Fuck said Mahogany Rush, Paul Corn said Glass Tiger. <laughs> Sorry, I, love you, I love you, Paul, because you're a little bit in excess. And Tim Bream said Voivod, Taylor T. Carlson said. Todd Kearns, he, artist. He's an artist. That's uh, the guy. That's the guy that was on Eddie Trunk. Yeah, Todd well, Kearns. He's in Slash's band too. Yes. So, yeah. Um, and then we got Greg Noggle said Voivod. Jeremiah Jacobson said April Wine. James West said Kitty. Jamie Davis said BTO. Russ Smith said Alienator. Kitty was uh, John Tesler said Red Rider. Ron <laughs> Hamugger said Three Days Grace. D. Brett Isabel said the Guess Who. Al Reed said April Wine. Alex J. Smith said Kick Axe. Robbie Williams said Annabelle Lou Mav said Frank Marino Mahogany Russ. Linda Wessel said April Wine. Jeff Hipson said the Guess Who. Brian, said, Brian Day said Moxie. The great Aaron Kamara from Decibel Geek Podcast. He said Bachman Turner Overdrive. Metal Ben Schuster said April Wine. Jerry Johnson said Pat Travers. And then uh, Mark Dolly said Annabelle. Dina Walker said Alanis Morissette. She agreed with my wife, Carrie. Hushberger said Gordon Lightfoot. And Tim Wisenack said uh, Bachman Turner -Tur Overdrive. Uh, good picks, guys. Yep. But uh, Gordon, but Lightfoot, I'm not, I'm not Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon Lightfoot? I don't know. But uh, then I get to my number eight, which is Bachman Turner Overdrive. My mom loved that band. So I kind of got into them because of her. Take care of business. I just remember The Simpsons when uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive goes, hey, we're going to play a song from a new album. And whoever goes, goes, no, take care of business. Take care of business. <laughs> Fucking love that episode of The Simpsons. Bach and Turner Overdrive rules. And we get to your number seven, Al. I'm going April Wine. Great band. 
Um, I love the album Harder Faster. It's one probably my favorite album by them. Uh, the song I Like to Rock is awesome. Love the video to that. The video is actually filmed at the studio where Rush filmed, uh, Rush recorded a lot of their albums, um, Moving Pictures, Permanent Waves, those albums. You, the old videos of them jamming in the studio. Uh, I Like to Rock is, in the, is filmed in the same studio with the same big open window, which is cool. I love at the end of, uh, of I Like to Rock where they, they jam on um, the riff to I Like to Rock kind of fits in with uh, Satisfaction and um, and uh, Beatles. Um, God damn it. Now I'm forgetting the Beatles. Charles, song. Beatles. No, he I, yeah, I got to think about what Beatles song sounds like Satisfaction. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was just thinking about that. Day too. Tripper. Day Tripper. Day tripper. So oh, yeah. they, they do. So if you're listening with, on headphones, their main riff for the song is in the middle. Then off to the left, you hear the satisfaction riff to the right. Hear the Day Tripper riff. And for some reason, it all fits together. It's like the oh, wow. precursor to like the mashup right. now. You know, they right. mash the three riffs yeah. together. I mean, listen to that song at the end, Charles. You'll love that shit. Ooh. And, uh, and then you know um, they had a hit. They had a hit here in America. Sound of the Gypsy Queen off of Nature of the Beast was probably their biggest album here, which came out in '81. And I always remember hearing that on uh, radio and stuff. So, but um, I need to actually dive more into their catalog. I know they got a lot of earlier shit and later stuff too. But I'm kind of like in that middle period from like the late '70s, early '80s. But just based on those couple albums alone, I love this band. You know, they're great. Um, actually, a um, um, guy I used to work for, uh, he co-owned a pizzeria with my cousin, and I worked there for eight years. He was from Canada, and he always used to jam, like, April wine on the, on the speakers in the pizzeria, which, and it was good, great stuff. I always liked it. So that's my number, what, seven? April seven. wine. So sure and didn't they also have another big hit with um, Just You and Me? Uh, yes, that Just You and Me. Just you also did me, yes. rock myself to sleep, which uh, Starship covered with uh, just be just between you and me. That's the other yeah. song. Yeah, Charles, great song. What's your number seven? My number seven. Is, I don't know if you, you don't have a lot of ton of hits, but fuck it, he was in Roadhouse and <laughs> extremely talented guy. That's a blind man, Jeff Healy. Oh, he great. Really <laughs> yeah. I Love never knew it. he was Canadian either. I didn't know he was Canadian either. Yeah. Yes, he's Canadian. Yes. Yes. He just that angel eyes song. Yeah, pretty song. I mean, sometimes Beautiful. you can just do one song and I'm I'm into it. So I mean that's a great, great song, man. man. It is. Confidence so, man. Confidence, confidence man, man is great. I played that on my show. Yeah. He's he was he's not with us. Andy anymore, did right? he passed away. No, he, uh, no, he passed away. That's a great regret of mine, too. Like there was a club here in New Jersey that it's still open now, Starland Ballroom. They get a ton of great bands. When they first opened, though, Andy, you um, next. I'll be right back. When they first opened, though, you used to go see a show. And then when you'd walk out of the show, they'd hand you free tickets for like an upcoming show a lot yeah. of times, which was great. You know, I guess they wanted to really get the club going and shit like that. And mm -hmm. I remember they handed me Jeff Healy tickets. And my wife and I were like, oh, man, we should go. Like, because my wife really loves angel eyes too uh i don't know what happened something happened we didn't end up going and i i think it was like only a year or two later he passed away and i was like shit we we always say to each other that we should have went to see him i would have loved to have seen him live you know <laughs> yeah so uh, what did he pass away from wasn't it like heart failure or something like that uh, i don't remember, I remember man yeah i'm not sure i just know he did so yeah yeah he did yeah. pass Jeff but he was, he was a great great guitar player man oh yeah, yeah. cool technique good too. good, good you know. pick man it's, it's always cool to remember these people man That's i totally i totally forgot about him man i'm glad yeah. you picked him yeah, me too anyway so uh, i guess we're at the andy now yeah 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 my next one um he's this low he should be higher he probably will be higher later on in um probably in a couple of years but i just got into this guy because of al's pick again when we were doing that um uh, that live show, and um, he talked about um, Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush, and I bought one yes. of their albums, the live album, not the yeah, live yeah. album he talked about. I'm 
I talk about one that's a split album, a studio and a live. And man, and in fact, he does um, a cover of um, oh, that Beatles song. It's off of Rubber Soul. Oh, jeez. Charles. I can't remember now. <laughs> oh, it's, um, I consider Charles the Beatles. Everybody's, everybody's brain farting. I don't know every Beatles cover. Every, everybody's brain farting on Beatles it. songs Sorry. that I can uh, I yeah. want to, No. Or she won. Um, Norwegian Wood. He, he did cover Norwegian oh. Wood. And um, he does it very well. Um, he's got a really good, powerful guitar playing. So right now he is at my number. Um, what number are we seven. at? Seven. 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 So um, he'll probably be higher later on, but right now I put put him at seven. Uh, who's it. next? Is it Jerry? Jerry. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I gotta. I I gotta put her on my list because I love her, man. I mean, fucking Alanis rules, dude. Love her voice. Love her music, dude. Talented. Her music got better after Jagged Little Pill, in my opinion. Um, of course, that was a monster fucking record. That that was yeah. like still a monster record today. Um, but I think her music actually gets better. Well, her last album wasn't that great. She did it like all at home on a piano. It's just you know, it wasn't all that great. But I love Alanis, and I don't apologize for that. So you know, that's I'm surprised that you don't have her higher. Well, she was on number one for a while, but she, no, I'm just kidding. No. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm like with Charles here a little bit. I really don't have a 11 through 1 list, you know? Okay. So I'm kind of winging it as I go here, kind of, some of these guys. So anyway, that's my that's my That's my, ugh, that's my pick. Okay. Out of the fan picks, the group picks, I saved this one just to fuck with him. Scribble. I think he picked this. Nickelback. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, oh. <No>, scribble. <laughs> I just wanted to fuck with you, bitch. <laughs> Nickelback sucks. All right. <laughs> and then I get to my number. My number seven is fucking Red Rider. That what? lunatic fringe song. My God, Tom Cochran. He did the best version of Life is a Highway. Fuck that country shit. That was his version anyway. What? No, that's his he original did the song. version first. Yeah, no. the original. And then fucking some country band did it for the fucking Footloose movie, Disney it? movie. I thought it was the Disney movie. I thought it was Footloose. No, Tom fo- Cochran did it a long time ago, dude. No, I know Tom Cochran did. I yeah. know. Lunatic French, I know you're out there. One of fuck the worst the videos cool. ever made. But fuck, that's <laughs> that fucking voice. And it sucks. Oh, that's a great just, team, man. Da-da-da. But, like greatly Gershman like likes to say ash atmospheric. This fucking that song is just doom, 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 doom. I don't care about any other song they ever did. That fucking song just fucking just put them up at my number fucking seven. So, Lover um, had more songs than that, goddammit. They did, but that <laughs> song was amazing. That song that was a pretty kick-ass team. That, that was song. a kick-ass fucking song. And I like life as a highway. <laughs> by Tom Cochran also. So that's why I put Red Rider by number seven. Al, what's your number uh, six? Six is Saga. Um, nice. I love that band too. And I remember the early days of MTV seen on the loose video very early days oh, yeah. of uh, of MTV. Um, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite songs about him is actually Wind Him Up. Um, that's a great song off of that uh, Worlds Apart album. Um, that's a cool video too. If you ever Never saw the video of that. Check it out. Uh, really cool video. Um, uh, they have some good, like, latter day albums, actually. I have uh, they do. Uh, I have a, I have a Generation, Generation 13, which is a really cool album, kind of a concept album. Uh, House of Cards is a great album. Um, the Human Condition was not um, the only, I think that's the only album that, uh, that um, they didn't have um, Michael Sadler as the singer. Um, there was a guy who came in briefly to replace him, but it only lasted one album. And then, and then Sadler came back. I saw Michael Sadler here in my my hometown in Rawway. They have um, uh, every year they have like a um, like a prog festival here, and they have like get like different bands and stuff. And Michael Sadler, uh, he um, 
he headlined it uh, one year, like probably uh, it was before, right before COVID. So I think it was like 2018, I think. And then Saga came back actually, I think the next year. Uh, but I didn't get to go see them. I uh, was away and I didn't get to see him, but I saw Michael Sal. I met him and he signed my Worlds Apart, my Worlds Apart album, which was cool. And, uh, and great band though, man. And they have an extensive catalog. I mean, it's not just never knew, on the never loose. knew, <laughs> exactly. but they're huge. The, the funny thing is that they're huge in Germany and Puerto Rico. Like they're huge there, you know. Puerto Rico, and, wow. They, and they're bigger there than they are in their home homeland of Canada, which is funny. Wow. But anyway, uh, Saga is my number six. Uh, Charles, you're next, right? Number six. What about the Devil Horns, baby? Anvil coming <laughs> in at number six. We we'll talk about a band with perseverance. I agree with you see, that. You seen that documentary, Anvil, Future and Anvil? Yeah. I, it was called. That's yeah. Pretty good. I can't stand Lips. Sorry. Lips actually said, I don't know if it's a true story, you could be bullshitting, but he said that the dude from Jethro Tull, the flute playing guy, the metal guy, you know, Ian, whatever his name Ian, is. I, I'm not a Jethro Tull fan. So oh, dude, Aqualung rules. Nah, I wasn't big on him either. Yeah, whatever. Not but uh, he apparently met Lips at the airport and said, you know, your documentary made me want to continue playing music. Like, it inspired me. That's pretty damn cool, if it's yeah. true. I don't know if it's true or not. It could be That's bullshit. a good documentary, though. But Anvil, they're, they're actually inspirational to a lot of bands, too. Metal bands and stuff. So they've been mm -hmm. around. I was checking them out, and uh, I'm into it. So I'll throw them on there. Because, like I said, only my number one is my, is my number one. Everybody else is pretty much, you know, either I think they're great for me personal reasons or I just think they have a uh, legacy that needs to be spoke about. Maybe they're not my favorite, but Anvil, I'm, I'm getting more into it, let's be honest. But I do, I liked what I heard. So I'm going to throw Anvil in there. So, Andy, what's your number uh, six? All right. This might be my last sh show doing this on, on the BS sessions. Why? Um, my number six is going to be Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, dude. Look at Listen, the CD man. cover. I don't <laughs> judge you, you, you. This ain't going to be your last show, dude. You, know, I might, I might, you were staring me there for a second. I'm like, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do to you? I thought we'd piss you I off. I'm not be asked to come back. No, you but, won't um, be asked to come back. So shut the fuck up. But um, I've seen them go back several times, especially there in the early two thousands. Man, they were coming around a lot. I like their brand of um, rock and roll, um, especially during that time when the new rock or whatever or new metal, whatever. I just lost interest in that. And then these guys came out with some, you know, some pretty good rock, and I still dig it. And this morning when I was driving to the vet's office and going to work and this and that. I was playing their greatest hits. I said, man, I got to push these guys a little bit higher on my list. So they're at number six, Nickelback. Jerry, Dude, you can put you can put Dora the Explorer on your list, and you'll always be welcome back. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Well, you so can, you can put Britney Spears on, mm -hmm. your list, on your list, and yeah. you would still be able to come back. Jerry, and my wife, number six? My wife talked about Justin Bieber and shit. Well, yeah, yeah. I love, <laughs> your wife's cool. Go ahead. He was a Jerry. huge success. He was a huge success. <laughs> yep. He was. Whether you like him or not. But it's he's true. an yeah. idiot. We're talking shit about Eminem. But go ahead, Jerry. Give me an R. R. O. O. C. C. K. Helix. What you got? Bra. Yeah, Felix. Love that band. Love that era too. <laughs> band. Really good. I didn't have the exact emotion that he did while I was singing that song, but <laughs> they would say that's some cool tunes, man. Give me good love. And I think that's like, I think that's actually a cover song, but they did a good version of it. Uh, Rock You, uh, Wild in the Streets. Deep Cuts the Knife. Rock, uh, ride you know, the Rocket, Rock dude. You. Ride the song. Rocket. Just good fun. I love rock that fucking roll. song on fucking Heaven. Now, I, now I know. <sighs> Wild one of them in the Street. One of them died in a bus accident. I don't know if that was the singer, or the guitar player, or something. I know somebody did. I can't remember who. But uh, that's the last I heard of Helix, actually. But uh, I always, I always loved them in the '80s and '90s. Party to them all the time. Headbangers Ball regular. So that's my number seven, is it? Yeah, number yeah, number seven. And I get to no, my six. Number six. Six. <laughs> I get to my number six. 
I looked him up. Stephen Wolf is a Canadian band. Two, uh, yeah, two dudes. Yeah, two break people. Their own rules oh, I fucked up the yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was his own rules. Yeah, yeah because I, I fucked up. Wolf, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll put Glass Tiger in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I ate Glass Tiger, but I fucked up, so I need to take I need to take the fucking hit. So Glass Tiger is my number six. What's your number five, Al? <laughs> I ate glass tiger. tiger. Mark, Mark oh, will not yeah. be welcome back on the on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, since I fucked up on my own rules, I need to pick glass tiger. If I pick Stephen Wolf, but fuck, I gotta pick glass tiger because I don't have another candy band. So, you're welcome, <laughs> Mark Dolly. So, uh, Al, what's your number uh, five? Number five, I'm gonna go Pat Travers band. Nice. I um, should pick that. Again, man, fucking Pat Travers is an unsung guitar hero, but you need to have live go for what you know in your live, in your album collection, because that's one of the greatest live albums. I mean, you got the rhythm section of Mars Cowling on bass and Tommy Aldridge on drums, and they just yeah. fucking kick ass. And then you got the two Pats, Pat Thrall and Pat Travers trading off licks on there. It's just fucking, it's killer. And then some of his earlier albums too. I mean, actually, and actually the album after that, Crash and Burn, the studio album, great album. Um, going back before the live album, uh, Heat in the Street, Putting It Straight, and Making Magic, great albums. Actually, Making Magic and Putting It Straight has Nico McBrain as, on the drums. Um, I don't know if oh, shit, really? Knew, and I don't know if a lot of people knew that. Yeah, early. I didn't know that. that. His early albums have uh, Nico, Nico on there. And uh, he kicks ass on there. And uh, I mean, just check him out, man. From like 76 to 81, man, put out a lot of good quality shit. So well, Pat, Pat Travers Dri is my, new, my number five. Well, Pat Driver Travers did ex did uh, make me want to snort whiskey. Yeah, dude, look at that. <laughs> Crash and so, burn. So Charles, what's your number That's five? That's a great song, man. It is. That song rules. My number five uh, learned from... Uh, the great Dr. Fuck turned me on to this band and uh, they had a new new album come out last year too. And Roger Norris brought him up. Sword. Yeah. Fuck killer metal band, man. Check man, them I... out. If you don't know you some sword, check it out. Good, good shit, bro. I stumbled on them just because I had sent off for the sword, which was a different band. Out it's a different band, yeah. Austin. And then he was like, oh, I thought you meant sword. And I was like, no. So then I looked in the sword and I was like, man, that's some killer shit. And this mm -hmm. new album they put out is pretty damn good. There was a huge gap between their albums, but uh I guess it was, you know, if you were a sword fan, I mean that was like a big deal. They got back together and did this. I think it's called three, the, the one that just came out. So um I'll check, check it, it out. out. Yeah, if you like that met that good old school metal. You're into that stuff. Not I too do. much growling, Mark. So Sword's good. Yeah. So what's your number uh five, Andy? Yeah, well, before I get that, Mark, if you want to let me know if you want this album, Glass Tiger, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll send it to you. Um, you know, them. it must suck if you want to just give it to me. I saw them. Yeah. I saw them open, I saw them open for journey in 1986. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes, Mi like Mi you know Mitch Lafon loves them, but enjoy. But uh, uh they really ahead. did have some pretty good pop rock songs on there. Um, my number five. Um, they should be a little bit higher, but um, I think this is a good place for them. But um, the Guess Who, I love the Guess Who. For a while there, I was buying everything I could possibly find by the Guess Who. Um, they were a little bit eccentric. Um, yeah. They really didn't follow the rules or follow the trends that was going on, you know. Um, they're if you listen to their complete albums, they're a lot different from what they release as singles. But nevertheless, um, the Guess Who, really good band, and uh, very good friends of Neil Young. Um, there in their early sixties when they were all running around Canada, and Winnipeg and around that area. So, the Guess Who is my number five. What's your number five, Jerry? Number five is another band from the 80s that I've kind of lost until Mark 
reminded me and gave me a couple of suggestions. I check it out. And I really like it. A band called Honeymoon Sweet. Fucking loved their first three albums. But after that, I totally lost track of them. And then I think you mentioned it was Hands Up, I think, the album you told me mm-hmm. to listen to. Great fucking record, dude. I love these guys, man. I mean... I'm still need to hear a couple more of their newer albums, but man, I fucking love their older stuff. Big Prize, Racing After Midnight, their debut, great fucking records, dude. But anyway, that's my number. What are we on? Six? Five? Five. 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 Mm-hmm. Anyway, so my number, that's my great band. My number five, you guys already touched on, was April Wine. Fucking great Canadian band. Fucking underrated band. Fucking I figured out that like a lot of people in our groups don't know who the fuck they are. Mm-hmm. You guys need to check out some fucking April Wine. Mm-hmm. They are fucking cool, fucking rock and roll, man. So that's my number five. And then we get your number four, Al. Uh, my number four, I'm going with Max Webster. Of um, course you did. <laughs> I'm, uh, I've discovered this band because of Rush, actually, because they shared a song. The, the two bands did a song together in the studio called Battle Scar. And uh, which is a cool fucking really kick ass tune. Um, they only have five albums. They were uh, from 76 to 80. And then uh, that was pretty much their career. And Kim Mitchell went on to go solo uh, through the rest of his career. I think they reunited like maybe once or twice in the 90s. And then, uh, mm-hmm. and then I was really it. But Kim Mitchell has kind of maintained a uh, really successful solo career in Canada. Uh, not really known here except for Go for a Soda. Uh, which was kind of a minor hit here in uh, in the states. And the Max Max Webster never really had a hit here in the states, but they opened for Rush a lot in the early days, uh, in the late seventies into the early eighties. And uh, um, if you like, kind of if you the first album, I mean, first, I mean, if you kind of like Zappa, Frank Zappa, it's kind of like uh, he definitely has that kind of Zappa esque kind of humor, musicianship in his music, in their music. I'm talking about like Max Webster's actual guy. It's not, it's uh, Kim Mitchell, but uh, but they were a very, very talented band, you know, musicianship wise and stuff. So kind of off the wall, some some songs and shit, really cool, you know. So that's my number four. What's your Max number Webster. four, Charles? Well, uh, real quick, before I do my number four, I had looked at my list and I had made a boo-boo. So I'm going to throw out my honorable mention, which is one. I had just had to bump them to fix it because it was I had somebody twice. Uh, my honorable mention is DOA, a great punk band mm. out of uh, Canada there. But my actual number four, now they fixed it. I think uh, we've already hit on them once. I love them. I love them, love them, love them. It's kind of not just the band. It's kind of a tie between the guy and the band. But Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush. Yes. What an incredible, incredible, incredible band. If you want to know some great guitar playing, check out Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush. Found the uh, the Agora show. Yeah. Uh, that, and Al said he had that DVD set, man. And because he's huge in Cleveland, because it's near, you know, Canada's right there. So this Rush. You know, we broke Rush too. You're welcome. Uh, and then. God uh, help her. Canadian scene is is pretty big in Cleveland as well. So he was always playing in Cleveland. So that was pretty cool. He did that show there. Great, 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 great shit. And Dr. Fuck is the one that has the DVD set. I actually don't have it. I need to get it. Yeah, oh, Dr. That's Dr. Fuck, Fuck, Sorry, Dr. Yeah, Fuck predi- uh, like that was his band. And so was Lou Mavs of Severed oh, Angel. That's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. You into that? Yeah, I need to get it, man. Yeah, I, I, I have heard them and they're really good. I have so much shit I'm listening to. I'm trying to listen to a lot of new music and I'm trying to listen to a lot. Of, I just got into corrosion of conformity because of metal Mike Tyler. I knew he, I knew he, awesome. the, my wound song. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Man. Okay. I listened to deliverance and I listened to another album for 2005. Fucking great fucking shit. Yeah. Thank you. Metal Mike Tyler. Well, Frank Frank Marino on his own, I think you'd really like the power of rock and roll. That record, I, I probably would. would, dude. You guys have, yeah. I, you know, you guys have give me a lot of good shit. There's just so much shit coming out; it's kind of hard to fit it all in. It's like uh, Andy. What's your number uh, five? Well, I'm four. Well, I'm four. Four. I'm number four. But uh, before I get to that, to go back to corrosion and conformity. 
they've got that groove you're always talking about, Mark. They, yeah, they got a good groove when it comes to their heavy music. Um, That's why so, I don't like Slayer. Really, There's no that groove. Was really, that was really only when Pepper Kina came into the band, though, because the early stuff is more uh, like crossover uh, hardcore. Is more okay. hardcore. So like the early albums um, are pre Pepper Keen and uh, Woody Weatherman. It, they were only a three piece. Woody Weatherman was actually the leader, and uh, they were more hardcore punk. Actually. I haven't okay. heard that, that yet. I started with Deliverance and went to the 2005 yeah. album. If you're yeah. if you're more into like the groove, like Sabbathy kind of yeah. sound, yeah, yeah, you're gonna from Deliverance. I was going. On, this is like get that. Sabbath fucking love on this shit. I was. It's like yeah. it's like Sabbath and Southern rock like mixed yeah. together, man. Really you know? cool. So. Yeah. I love those riffs that they have, dude. So yeah. so thick and rich. Feed Fucking my, my, um, my, uh, my number four um, is going to be um, the one and only Joni Mitchell. I'm starting to get into her. I've got about three three albums by her. I think she's a fantastic writer. Um, but you really do need to be in the mood for it. You can't just put it on a Joni Mitchell. You gotta, if if you're you know. the old young nut swinger, if you did pick Joni Mitchell out, Andy, I would have been upset with you. <laughs> I don't nut swing on anybody, but you I do love like the old young. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but I don't nut swing. No, I do. I'm a rush nut swinger. So go ahead. No, but that's it. I'm Joni Mitchell. So, uh, Jerry, you're next, right? What's your number yeah. four? Fucking great metal band, Voivod, dude. You got to have them on your list, man. Uh, one of the best thrash rock bands ever, man. I mean, War and Pain, great fucking record. Nothing Face, uh, fucking Angel Rat. I think I picked that album on our 91 show that we did. Um, I think the singer is the only original member left. They can't do a ton of members, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Al, you probably know that. Am I right about that? Piggy was, Piggy was the one that died. Okay. So I know they was, all use like they all use like names like Snake and all that shit. I can't think of their real names at the moment. But uh, yeah, I mean they're a great metal band, and that's one I'm going to suggest probably later on the Freeform show that we do one of their albums. So uh, expect that, Mark. <laughs> I don't care, dude. I I ain't a. Hey, you like Metal Church? I don't think never heard of Metal Church. Yeah, I never heard of Metal Church till we did that review. That what? Really? Whoa. Really? Huh. Yeah. And Great you fun. love metal. Yeah, yeah I hate <laughs> but metal, what, right? What, what on there? I was what, four? Yes. Four. Yeah, four. That's my number four. Dude, all right. So my number four is fucking uh, Honeymoon Suite. Just remember seeing Good, uh, Good fucking band. Thank you for turning me on to their later stuff. I got a new girl now. I can Big feel hit it here again. in America, man. <laughs> And and they, they did the the title track for Lethal Weapon on Racing After Midnight. Oh man! That oh, fucking, that was them, dude. They still make. They oh, did the song Lethal Weapon. I never knew that. Yeah, they were the title track of the first movie. Where love is a lethal is a ballad, power ballad, but it's fucking good. I, I love fucking the guitar player is so fucking good in that band. I don't remember his name right now. Uh, Johnny D. I don't know. Fucking great guitarist that nobody talks about. Fucking, I love me some Honeymoon Suite. I always try to play them for Mark Dolly. He loves them. I too. agree with you. Fucking that was Honeymoon one. That was Suite. one band, later 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 album band that you turned me on to that I really like. Yeah, I love Honeymoon Suite. And then we get to our number three, Al. Number three is going to be Neil Young for me. Um, I remember being a young kid, and my older brother had Live Rust on vinyl, man, and we would play that over and over dude and i was like really like wow man it's, it's like heavy like just dirty and grungy and just real fucking cool man you know like uh and just so many classics on that live album that's another live album that should be in everybody's collection in my opinion um i mean his catalog is just so vast he's touched on so many different styles and uh mm -hmm. but i love like that kind of um you know that that period of like you know Russ never sleeps and kind of before that like the the seventies stuff really is my wheelhouse with him. You know, I mean, I know he's done great stuff after that, but I stick to that seventies stuff because that's what my older brother played, and to this day, it's, that stuff is just timeless. You know, uh, so Neil Young's my number three. 
I know Andy's going to touch on him <laughs> pretty much. Well, if he doesn't, I'll be very disappointed. Yeah, I'll, right? leave, I'll leave. I'll leave the rest of the explanation for, to him. <laughs> so Charles, what's your number three? Oh, this one might be a shocker, maybe. You know, being that I'm Mr. Elitist, but I got my first real six string. Wrong with that at all. Five and dime. Yes. Brian Adams, baby. Come on, Number man. Three. Why would you be That's elitist on him? He rules. Fucking wrote War Machine. Like I said earlier, <laughs> that's enough said right there. Fucking wrote War Machine. Him and Jim Valance. But he did lose me with everything I do. I do it for you. See, but, I feel uh, like but, 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 nah. go a go great away. song, dude. Take great take song. away that song. Like that whole album is fucking great. Waking up the name. Dude, I hated yeah, the that's one with Sting and Rod Stewart. I, I didn't I like that. Oh, I didn't like that Ooh. one either. That I'm the one the, the song or something. Yeah, yeah. Three, three, fucking three, three Musketeers, Musketeers, the Four Musketeers movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sting and him. Yeah, I didn't like that. Rod Stewart. Four Musketeers. Watch the people some more episode on that song. Yeah, but heaven, <laughs> you a great song. Heaven, right. oh, uh, yeah. run to it's you. only rock, you know. The kids want to rock, dude. That's oh, the one yeah, with dude. Tina Turner. Uh, when your yes. world has been shattered, it's not love, nothing else matters. Uh, Don't you man, worry. Brian Adams is cool. Shit, man. Oh, that riff, dun, 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 he did become dun, like dun, 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 he did become a bushy ballad guy later on, but I mean, I, I liked his stuff before that well his so, new album is nice. fucking amazing is what Lang cool. is producing again he's he's huge he's fucking brian adams man i dig him so number three what's your number three jerry oh no andy what's your number three um the same as charles man brian adams that dude is awesome you know um the summer of 69 such a great track you know run to you um, I did like um uh, that song. Um, yeah, everything I do, I do for you. I think it's a pretty cool track. Um, Beautiful but, um, that. Yeah. Have you yeah, guys yeah. ever heard the album Eighteen again? I want to yes. be your un- I want to be your underwear. Come oh, on, that, that album was just okay. That wasn't. Oh fuck off. <laughs> no, but I do like Brian Adams, and he is my number three. <laughs> so, what's your number three, Jerry? I think you picked them earlier. I love these bands. Again, another band that was in the 80s, and I kind of, I don't even know if they're still together, to be honest with you, but I love them back then. The Killer Dwarfs, man. Love they're still together. Albums. They're still Stand together. Tall, big deal, their debut album, man. Funny-ass yeah. videos of them fucking going around, rolling around in that box all the time. Fucking yeah. funny. When they made them, they, they put the makeup and cut the hair and all that shit off, made them like a boy band. I, we Stand Alone, I think, is that song. Great. Uh, just kind of like Honeymoon Sweet, you know, on that same... Helix genre type of Canadian rock. Uh, that's my number three. Love that band. They are my, still around though. Yeah, they are. Okay. But then I get to my number three because it's when I got into this album, you guys all probably got into this, this band earlier, but uh, it's like I remember it's a long way to heaven, long way to heaven, three short steps to hell. Helix, man. Yeah, and then I got back in that album, Long Way to Heaven. They had Ride the Rocket. Hey, come with me. Let's ride the rocket. <laughs> it's fucking just cheesy fucking lyrics, sexual fucking great. And I got back into like No Rest for the Wicked, Wild in the Streets. Like, and that band is still making great music. They're still around. Helix. That's Heavy my metal love. Three. Heavy metal, metal love. love. I try to play them every week on that metal metalstation.com. Cool. Because they rule them and Y and T and Armored Saint. But uh and Tom Petty. But that's my number three. And then we get to your uh number two, Al. The mighty Voivod. You gotta go with my number two, man. Yeah. Voivod fucking rules, dude. I mean, the, the early stuff was like thrash, and then they got they started getting more technical and sort of like some progressive elements started coming into their music. They they're they're just a band that nobody else sounds like that, man. They're just so unique. Um, there's two original members left in the band. It's uh uh Dennis the singer and Michelle the drummer. So um even Jason Newstead was in them for a period about seven years. Um in uh, mm-hmm. after he left Metallica. 
he was an Aussie, I think, for a brief period, and then he went to Voivod, and he did like two albums with them. Um, I like his solo but, album, the metal album. That was pretty good. Who? Um, Jason Newstead. Jason Newstead. Yeah. Um, the band Newstead was great. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, brain, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then um, Voivod had a, a run of albums. Killing Technology was great. That's when they That's when they came on my radar. A friend of mine in high school had this out, their third album, Killing Technology. And I listened to it. And I was like, holy, holy shit, man. Who the fuck is this, man? Because I was into Russian stuff and kind of had a little bit of those elements in them, but mixed with thrash and stuff like that. It's when they were starting to get the first two albums were like very raw thrash, you know, stuff. And it was like real uh, dissonant type of shit, you know, and then Killing Technology. And then um, Angel Rat in 91 was produced by Terry Brown, which was great. Uh, probably like as far, probably the peak of like kind of their commercial success, if they had, had any. And but uh, but like great band, They're still putting out records today, man. I mean, uh, Dennis is still a vocalist. Michelle's still a drummer. They have a great guitar player uh, da named Daniel. He's he's cool, you know. So um, check. I mean, I love that band so much, man. If it was, if it wasn't for Rush not being on this list, that's why they're high, man. They're they're, they're up there. They kind of remind me of a heavier Rush in a way, like very unique, you know. So that's my number two. What's your number two, Charles? Well, my number two, I'll probably be in good stead with Andy here. And if one of my favorites, Noel Gallagher, holds this guy in high regard, of course, he's going to be on my list. My number two is Neil Young. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, Cinnamon Girl, Hey, Hey, My, My. He's the only reason why I can stand Crosby, Stills, and Nash is when he's in it. Uh, Ohio <laughs> That's a great song. Hey, Steven uh, Sills doesn't want to tour because he can't do drugs anymore. But go ahead. Hmm. Well, Crosby's not alive either. So I maybe mean, he could do it on his own, I guess. But uh yeah, I'm a big fan of Neil Young. I like his guitar playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got a he's got a different style playing that's really cool. He slams that whammy bar, man. But uh He's a great songwriter. He's he's one of the all-time greats. So he's my I saw two. Neil I saw Neil Young and Crazy Horse like 10 years ago, man. They played here in New York. And then I had never seen uh, I had never seen Neil Young with Crazy Horse. I saw him solo when he would do that uh what's that festival that he does, Andy? Um the uh, bridge. He, what's that? On the bridge festival or um... no. Oh no! Wait a minute! You, Everybody does um, the bridge. Live Aid, Live Aid, Farm Aid, Farm Aid, Farm Aid. Farm Aid. Farm Aid. Yeah. So, so I saw him solo on that, but I saw him with Crazy Horse ten years ago, and it, they just jammed, man. It was just fucking unbelievable, man. They still, they rocked, man. It was so good, and like Charles says, guitar playing is just like, it's really cool, man. I love his style, man. You know, yeah. so got good one, Charles. So what's your number two, Andy? Uh, my number two, um, the first five albums by this band is fantastic. I love it. Um, Bachman Turner Overdrive is my number two. Nice. That that band's so fucking badass, man. It's like one great jam after another. You know, even though their songs are, are a little bit shorter than a long jam, but still, dude, their playing is just fantastic. So Bachman Turner Overdrive. What's your number two, Jerry? This is actually a, a kind of a newer thrash band, but I really love them. Um, I, I mean, I still love them actually, but they're called Three Inches of Blood. Oh, yeah, I heard of them. Fucking great band, man. Advance and Vanquish, man. Listen to that fucking album, dude. It'll blow your mind away. It's not really death metal, it's, it's like thrash heavy metal. Um, a great song, The Ashes of Evil, fucking great song. Deadly Sinners, great song off that album. Recommend them highly if you've never heard it before. That's my number two. My number two is like uh, the first tape I ever stole from fucking Sears and Robeck Company. <laughs> fucking Brian Adams. Cuts like a knife. <laughs> fucking Cuts like a knife. That Man, fucking tape. Of course he'd be my number two. Reckless. Cuts like a knife. His first album. Waking Up the Neighbors. His newer albums. The guy can still write good songs. He even sang with what, what Scary Spice? 
That's like, on a day like today. Okay. Well, that's yeah, not right. dude. That's a great album too. <laughs> Fucking, I I haven't heard a bad Brian Adams album ever. Mm. So Brian Adams is my number two, and he is touring the United yeah. States, fucking America, right now. Jerry, didn't you get tickets? Yes, I do. It's still coming in the week after Rocket Pod. Why wouldn't you? Joan Jett's opening because she opens for everybody. Joan Jett fucking opens up for everybody. I must have she seen her like ten everybody. times opening up. Yeah, but I would get tickets. But I want to see you too. Why in Vegas? I'm sorry. <laughs> I would go see you too as well. You two they're going, fans they're, they're, are they're doing a, just as bad. They're doing a Vegas thing, right? Yeah, they're doing the spear, dude. Octung Baby, I think, is what they're doing too. They're doing Octung Baby. I love that yeah. fucking album, man. Yeah, yeah Larry, Larry, Mullen. Larry Mullen oh. is going to be drumming for them. Yeah, Larry Mullen's not yeah. going to be drumming, but he gave right. his blessing to have that fucking Swedish drummer or whatever he is. Dude, that band point. had never changed anybody. Since no, that is true. That, is that true, band Good has point. so much integrity, more yep. than Kiss ever had. Oh, please go to number one. I will go. <laughs> to my number one, Al. What's your number one, Al? <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. So fuck off. The one, the one and only Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush. <laughs> Got to be my number awesome. one, man. Oh, yeah. Um, I saw Frank Marino like about. 13, 14 years ago here, he played at a club called BB Kings here in New York City. Um, I sat down, sat down at a table with a friend of mine. Uh, we took the train in and stuff and started playing, dude. And as the fucking night went on, he got just got better and better. And I had to scrape my jaw off the floor and how fucking good this guy was. Seeing him up close, personal, you know, up close and personal, man. This guy just was jaw droppingly good. And I can understand. I just, nobody knows. Nobody, more people Did you should get know a picture about this with guy. him. No, I didn't meet him. Oh, um, that's sad. But I wish I could. Everybody. I wish I did. Um, but he, you know, a couple of songs into the set, he was like, um, just hang in there. You know, it's going to be a long show. This fucking show was like three and a half hours, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And by the two and a half hour mark, my friend was like, dude, listen, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Because when we took the train and he lives right across from the train station here in New Jersey. So he could just hop off the train, just walk across the street to his house. So he's like, I'm going to take off, man. I'm like, I'm not leaving. So I'll just go home later, you know. And I had to see the rest of the show, man. I did, this guy just blew me away. And I'm glad I got to see him at least once because I know now he's retired. He's not touring anymore. He has like some sort of unspecified, I guess, illness or something. I don't know what's going on with him, but um, but I, I should just if you're just gonna have one thing by him, you gotta have Mahogany Rush live, the live album from '78. It's just like jaw droppingly good. I mean, most bands' killer albums in the '70s were live albums anyway, so yeah. this is like this just shows off his talent and uh, and then you know just get other studio stuff after that, man. I mean, he deserves. Uh, for me, he deserves my number one. So, Mahogany Rush, Frank Marino. I hope he's going to be all right. <laughs> What's your number one, Charles? Well, Jerry's going to love this one here. I guarantee it. I And I ain't apologizing for it. My number one is Alanis Morissette. Oh, shit. What wow. a great songwriter. Mm -hmm. Tremendous songwriter. Great run. I agree. I agree, too. Oh, you agree yeah. when he says it. When I say it, you laugh at me. No, I said I can't. It's like no Gallagher or Oasis. I can listen to a few songs at I'm a just time. I'm just fucking with you. Sorry, Charles. Yeah, Sorry, ahead, Charles. Charles. She's, she's, she's an incredible artist, man. I mean, for real. It's a great, great run. I Yeah, I was aware of the new album. I, I didn't really listen to it. I'm not interested in it. One comment. I think anything. she is the one that gave Taylor Hawkins his start. Yeah, yeah, she was. So he was in the video. You ought to know. Yep. And uh man, that song Ironic's great. And... Uninvited, it's my favorite. That's oh. a fucking great tune, man. Tremendous. I mean, I mean, but again, I mean, it's I know it might be funny to put her over Neil Young. I I like her voice a little better than Neil Young. 
so it's just that i i listen and and she's a great songwriter too so i mean hey whatever i mean without rush and triumph that would be number one and number two yeah. that's the key thing you say right there songwriter you don't see that anymore man no. it's, just, it's, it's a lost art man it really is it's sad actually yeah yeah see, Jerry, voice how too. you talk to you rule what do i do <laughs> you All do right. talk oh, okay. you talk you you have some oh, great man. opinions oh, big bitch okay. so just All right, remember Andy. that i'm so happy somebody agreed with me about her so yeah, it makes yeah. I, I agree with you. She wasn't on my list. It was on my wife's list. But uh, Andy, what's your number one? Well, I think everybody already knows what my <laughs> number one is. Um, <laughs> if even if, I'll be right even if Glass Tiger. Even, <laughs> even if Rush, right, even if Rush and Triumph were on this list, they Neil Young would still be my number one. Um, he's only number two to the Beatles, in my opinion, in my in my world of rock, um, he's my number two favorite. They'll never change. Number one, number two will be Beatles and then Neil Young. Uh, what can you say about him, man? He's, you know, you never know what what kind of album he's going to come out with or what kind of music he's going to come out with. Um, Miss Simbies was his bread and butter, which is true. In the 80s, he tried a little bit too many different things, trying to find a niche so you know one album is um electronic another one is rockabilly another one straight country another one is new wave but um in the 90s he really came back to came back to his own whatever calling him the godfather of grunge which i you know i don't like the term or whatever but uh when he came out with freedom and harvest moon and a bunch of great albums in the 90s and he continued that into the 2000s. I've seen him about five times. He's just one of he, oh, well, like I said, he's one of my favorites. I love his music. Um, the first album I got by him was Live Rust. Um, just like a couple of us, you know, Live Rust was our gateway to, to yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. double live album. And you know, especially on that double live album, it touches on everything that he is, you know. He starts off with a with with a acoustic set, and then he brings out the horse, and you know you hear mid tempo rockers, and then you hear his hard rock songs. So um, very very influential in um, his music to different genres as well. So my number one is um, Neil Young with Crazy Horse, with Stray Gators, with so many different bands that he put together for the for the sound and for the feel that he wants at that moment. So um, Neil Young is my number one. Yeah. See how cool we are. We did. You know, my favorite brand is Rush. I let you have your favorite guy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. See how cool I am. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. So, but, uh, so just for that, um, I'm going to make Tom Cruise my favorite actor of all time. Thank, you. thank God. You should. <laughs> oh, Michael J. Fox. You're right there. But uh, Jerry, what's your number one? I thought something about I want to say something about Andy's pick. I remember I was on one of his first shows that I guested on, and uh, I don't know. I told him I'll probably be unpopular by saying this, but I can't fucking stand Neil Young. Remember that? Oh yeah. And then I went back. Then I went back and I listened to him again, and I'm starting to get back into him. So I have to thank Andy for that one because uh, come on, this notes for you. Just I get it now. I. I, didn't, I couldn't stand his voice, but I'm, I guess the order I get the one I'm like his voice. But uh, so I, yeah, and thank you for that. I've been kind of slowly revisiting his catalog, so I'm just, so that's your number it. one, Jerry. No, 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 no. Whoa, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pushing too much. My number one. I number one's gonna be Lover Boy. I know it. Okay, I'm waiting. Show over. Show over. No, I said Lover Boy oh. already. I can't do him twice, unfortunately. Damn, do it twice. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I think this is going to be the only one that all five of us said, I think. The great fucking Brian Adams, dude. One of the best songwriters of our time, man. Cuts Like a Knife album, This Time, Straight from the Heart. Fucking Reckless, dude. One Night Love Affair, yeah. Somebody, Heaven, Chock Full of Fucking Hits. Oh, yeah. uh, waking Up the Neighbors, man. Charles' favorite song, Everything I Do, I Do a Few. However, I, just, <laughs> I think it came out on the Robin Hood soundtrack. It right? came out. That was a bonus track on that album. So Whatever. But anyway, but it had, uh, uh, can't stop of... this thing we started. Uh, yeah, great tunes, man. 
fucking yeah. great songs, man. You know, Charles Packy, said he wrote, packing you in, dude. And even the, that, hey, honey, I'm even the old rock and roll hell too. Into That's the a, Fire, man, which is a, a it wasn't a very successful. Into form, the Fire is my favorite song. Album into I the have. Fire, so Heat good. of the Night, Heat of the Night is fucking great. In the Heat of the Night, uh, they'll be coming around. And I think he's the only one that all five of us, I think, mentioned. I think. Yeah, I saw him so, on that tour on the Heat of the Night. The great fucking album, man. But yeah, I, I, I agree with Charles. I didn't like the fucking Rod Stewart thing. The Hooters whatever, opened. But, um, but hey, I really rock and roll health too. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, oh, well, I like that yeah. song. Yeah. 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 Why is it always started, like to go back to out, Kiss? His actual first couple albums were actually very disco-ish. If you listen to them, and I, the hard Kiss really? Yeah. This not very good, one especially. Yeah, not very good. But uh, I mean, cuts like a knife. I I consider that his. Thing this well. That's like his start. Everything yeah. is all right. No, and this time, way. yeah, great. She's gonna dude. get away. Great from the heart, beautiful fucking song, dude. I mean, guys, this fucking talented songwriter, dude. So that's my number one. Well, my number one. People have already said this band because I don't have Rush. I don't have Triumph. This would actually be my number three group. Lover Boy. Mike Damn. Reno can still fucking bring it. Unlike Paul Stanley of Kiss, Mike Reno, <laughs> even though he's a badass, <laughs> he can still sing live. Fucking Queen of the Broken Hearts, Turn Me Loose, Take Me to the Top, Turn Dangerous, which was a Brian Adams song, which was actually called Lover boys with dangerous. You got it coming to me. Dangerous. What am I going to do? Brian Adams actually had that. If you had the reckless 30th <laughs> anniversary, it was called reckless. It goes reckless. What am I going to do about it? Reckless. And what a fun I'm, fact. They fucking lover boy changed that to dangerous. Took reckless up, which was a good call. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. Um, Mike Reno stole Paul Stanley's uh, headband from the elder. Uh, era. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Paradise, that's your favorite one, huh? Mike? Oh, I fucking love Ann Wilson. Mike Reno. But the thing is, if you listen to that, doesn't it sound like almost <laughs> Paradise? Yeah. Huh? Almost Paradise. I'm sorry. I love no, gay people. No. You're good. That's that pre no, I never heard that again. before. <laughs> you never heard it where it, it sounds like almost paradise. Nope, no. I never thought Listen it Listen to it again. Wrong. You will hear it. No. Well, now that you put that in my head, Jesus Christ. pre and this stuff. <laughs> pre <laughs> Minority report rules. <laughs> my God, bitches. I knew Let's you'd pick you. lover boy number one. Fuck yeah, dude. Mike Reno well, could still sing. Only because Rush and Triumph were not allowed. So. Yeah. Yes, but they were. Well, that, that would have been, been my two and one, too. So. Dude, Loverboy has so much deep tracks, prime of your life. I can do. Over Neil Young? Oh, fuck yeah. I picked Atlantis over Neil Young, but Loverboy no. over Neil Young. I love, you know, everybody likes it. I think Loverboy gets made fun of because they're called Loverboy. Paul Dean. You are correct. Paul <laughs> Dean is an amazing guitar player. Great guitar player. Outstanding guitar player. Loving He's every minute better than of it. Frank Marino. Dude, loving every minute of it. That <laughs> album, they have a song called Bullet in a Chamber. I love that fucking song. I like love It goes, yeah. Won't you do yourself a favor? I'm like a bullet in a chamber. I fucking it love that. It wasn't for Pesky Nirvana. Lover Boy would still be tearing it up. Oh, fuck, it. <laughs> fuck Nirvana. One chorus, one verse. My God. So that was our top 11 fucking Canadian bands or yeah. artists. Nobody picked Celine Dion. Nobody picked Glass Tiger. Thank you fucking did. God. Who you picked did. Glass you Tiger? Did. Oh, because I had you to did. change it because fucking Stefan wasn't a real Canadian band. So... Fuck you, Glass Tiger. I hated that fucking song back in the day. 
Oh, well, the thing is, is that that's why I had asked you that question was specifically because of Steppenwolf. Yeah, because I didn't pick Skid Row. Sebastian Bach is a Canadian. And I didn't, and I didn't pick the band. I love the band. The, well, the band was three fourths. Of, I would have picked the band because, like, it was four fifths. Four fifths. Yeah, the band would have yeah. been up there. So, fuck, yeah. I picked the band instead of Glass Tiger. But, uh, that's I mean, too, too late now. Too late now, buddy. I, I, mean, know, too late now. I had to pick Glass Tiger. tiger. Yeah, so, you are big ass talking your top five. Oh my god, yeah, man. god. No, 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 no more because, <laughs> because I had to go by my rules at a switch. Yep, but I'm the one that has rules. it online. See, you go like me and break them. You could have kept what you had, but I just that's you. You love them rules. So coming soon, though, folks. Someday down the road, top 11 English bands without the Beatles and Stones. Ooh, that's gonna be Ooh. easy. That would be easy. That well, be you so can't do. Well, I don't you know, know because you you left out Zeppelin. But shut up, Mark. Don't give him any. You can, no, because <laughs> Jerry, you pick Zeppelin. You uh, have to take the okay. The Stones, yeah, no Beatles, Beatles, Beatles Stones, and Zeppelin, Zeppelin, Sabbath, King. No, I'm doing, I, I or Sabbath. Uh, you can't have Sabbath in there either. <laughs> or Floyd. Uh, Judas Priest, no Iron Maiden. Or Floyd. Maid. Basically all of England. Yeah, well, we'd be stuck with Frankie Goes to Hollywood. What the fuck, dude? Come on, <laughs> dude. I picked Duran, Duran, and Depeche Mode. But anyway, oh, I, I, there's a top Oasis. eleven. There's a top eleven Zeppelin. Wham! I pick Wham, and Oasis. Yeah. <laughs> the Escape oh. Club, Wild Wild West. What oh a fuck song, that shit! Huh? Speaking of <laughs> that's that's weird weird shit. Speaking oh, of Oasis, uh. Noel Gallagher is going to be playing Central Park here in New York. Yeah, um, I got yeah. Charles is trying to go get me to see him in LA, and I go, "Well, you know what, Charles? I go with you if you're here, but you're not here, so I'm not going with you." You like well, it's he's touring with garbage. If you Ooh, like that, yeah. I yeah. like garbage. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's touring with garbage. Yeah, so. Shirley Manson's such a hottie. She still is, and oh, he's playing God. amphitheaters, Mark, not rib houses. Oh, I did. I, have I ever put down Oasis? No. Ice houses, rib houses. Oh God, rib houses. That's even worse. <laughs> playing bigger Sam Hagar don't play rib houses. So yeah, rib, rib joints. Whoever said that Sammy Hagar plays rib joints are idiots. <laughs> Johnny Vogan. Johnny Vogan. Oh man. Yeah, I'm calling you out, bitch. The Join not- the Freeform Rock Podcast community. You all right, motherfucker. I got a question for you guys. We all know, I know Tim Brian. He's a sinking Stanley guy. I don't know the story. What had happened there? Can we talk about it last week? Yeah, we did. I don't remember. He, he went broke, to. He broke. He the, went to. Uh, he broke the lip. He broke the, that he got Doc McGee to say oh, that. Oh, okay. Lip-sync. We did talk about that. My bad. Yeah, okay, we, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. I was fucking drunk. I, I am. I'm drunk right now. But, but I anyway, so. And Susanna Hoffs is better looking than Belinda Carlisle. All right. Well, of course, dude. I mean, oh, I don't know. Maybe Madonna. Madonna. Uh, Madonna. 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 argument anymore. Yeah, well, see, that, argue, that argument buddy. ends with Susanna Hoffs. I don't care what the fucking yoga is like. Susanna I Hoffs saw a, a great Instagram little short clip of today. She did an acoustic version of Manic Monday. And it was oh, yeah. really good. Yeah, in her house. So She's really awesome, her on Instagram, man. folks. She still got that voice. Yeah, she so. does. But uh, did we talk about? Did we talk about that last week? I do not remember. We did. But uh, let's I'm fucking. Let's, I'm fucking getting crazy here. Yeah, <laughs> let's get to the end of the show. Al, I want you to pip your shit. Be cool. We podcast out. Fucking Facebook page, YouTube channel. I I put Deep Purple up on there, but I got blocked. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna have to create a uh, gonna have to create a um, an account for like bitch shoot or something and put like stuff like that up there. That's because YouTube's like fucking. Sometimes they they're just so fucking picky with what you put up there. But anyway, um, oh, I'm shit, going to see, see Winery Dogs next week. Um, Fuck yeah. it's probably my next show. And uh, yeah, yeah, man. And I'm my friend's working on my friend knows Billy Sheehan actually, so he's trying to get passes for us. So you might see pictures with me and fucking 
everybody from Wondery Dogs. Oh my God, dude. You know, why don't you say, hey, dude, I, I'm on this guy, I'm on this YouTube podcast called the Mark and Jerry with Charles thing. Yeah, if you ever go we'd to like, the we'd like to interview us. you and uh we won't send it to Blabbermouth. <laughs> Anyway, man, that's that's what I got going on. Um, I'm gonna be on um, uh, Sunday. I'm gonna be on uh, uh, rock, um, uh, rock and roll. Yeah, rock and roll over. Uh, rock rock all fuck, over man? your podcast. Rock all over your podcast. Yeah, Andrew and Conestrachi uh, and Eric are in Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I love and, them. Uh, they rule. We're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing Journey, Departure, and Caddyshack. Oh my God, <laughs> assholes. That's my Why shit. you want to do it? I would do it, but they ain't gonna have me on there because I'm fucked up. But uh, <laughs> uh so Charles. Sunday, Sunday, that's gonna be the episode Sunday, which he says doesn't usually come out for a couple weeks anyway. It doesn't. So I did. I, what did I just? I did the cars candy out. That's an opposite. Yeah, great episode. Andy, pimp your shit. Oh yeah. Um, this Wednesday I'm going to have another vinyl battle from 1986. It's going to be. Uh, Megadeth's uh, Peace Cells, Who's Buying versus Metallica's Master of Puppets. I gotta be on that one. Um, they're both from 1986. They both have eight tracks. And I've got a special guest that's going to be on there. Metal Ben Schuster is going to be on there. Oh, I love that dude. Doing that with us. Um, I've been talking to him today and um, he confirmed that he'll be on there. So I'm excited about that. So if anyone else wants to be on there, let me know. I know Al said it all depends on when the winery dogs are playing. Yeah, I think it's next Wednesday, so I won't be able to get on. on I'll, be on I'll be all on there. Right. I'll be on. I'll be on there. Okay, cool. Uh, what about you, Charles? I know it's tough for you uh, because of work and all, and and it being in the middle of the night. Have a game day decision. We'll all right about it. Yeah, of course. But that's what I got going on um, next week, so I'm excited about that show. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to go track by track and see which one's actually the better album. So, so that's what uh, I got going on. Charles, what do you got to pimp? Nothing. Nothing. Well, you got us. You got two podcasts. I'm watching this and then uh, Freeform Rock Podcast. I won't be on this episode. Well, of course, we, we, we do the same thing as rock all over you. We, we do... Uh, backlog recording style so i might be on the video this week though folks name you know check it out the first three-way video three-way love on free form that's how we roll with the pre-cacks and uh <laughs> fuck that should be the name of the show the pre-cacks <laughs> dogs dogs uh but yeah and then you know the following week we're going to record something special i don't want to get into it too much we don't do spoilers on this show here. And uh, that's about it. Freeform Rock Podcast, uh, our show right here, the BS Sessions. Like, subscribe, share. All helps with the al algorithms. Let's do that for us and you, and we'll keep going for you, our great fans, especially you, Sammy Dolly. <laughs> Jerry. I mean, basically what Charles says, man, uh, free form rock podcast, toasting that with you. That's a lot of fun. I guess I, I can't say what we're doing this Saturday, right? No, that's okay, coming so up. I won't say that, but it's a deep dive into a good band's old catalog, which I'm looking forward to. That's all. I'll leave it at that. Now, besides doing this, what are we doing next week on the BS session? Uh, we I mentioned, I mentioned the top 11. Zeppelin. I think it's Led Zeppelin, right? Top yeah, 11 okay. Led Zeppelin, right? Yeah, chapter 11 Zeppelin. I bet you guys want to Zeppelin on that. albums or songs? I say songs. They songs. don't have 11 albums, so it's got to be songs. Studio songs only. Yeah. Studio songs, yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, man. My favorite band. Because so. we are a team, man. We 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 ask each other what we want to do. There ain't no fucking uh, people saying, fuck you. We ain't doing that. We I'll do anything. I'll do Slayer. I'll do King Diamond on the Freeform Rock podcast. I don't give a shit because you know what? It's honest opinions. And I I'm don't have any hangups on it. You did hot poop, man. So I did a hot poop. I did Fairport Point Convention. I did Mascara Sue. 
You know, I'm very open to shit. And uh, Lee rules. I love him. But uh, I just want, like Charles said, I want you guys to like and subscribe to this uh, podcast. Mark and Jerry with Charles. BS Sessions. Uh, check out the Freeform Rock podcast. We have an episode every Friday. We have a video every Saturday. And there's going to be a lot of episodes that all th- me, Charles, and Jerry are doing together. So it's fucking cool. I, I like that because I like I have more freedom. I can pick more shit. You guys can pick more shit because I ain't a bitch. <laughs> I love you, Lee. No, I don't love you, Lee. I like you, Lee. But uh, that's what we do. And fucking check out everything we do. And let's get the fuck out of here, guys. Right. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Right, man. Let's up for next week. Let's rock out, rock out, rock. Well, like Triumph said, like Triumph says, rock out, roll on. Let's fucking get the fuck out of here. Goodbye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.